to Truth Bringers Part 2 with The Ruined Keep. We're very happy to be here, and uh, we are going to get right into it, because we have waited far too long for Part 2. And hopefully, this might be the final part, but if it is not, then there may be a Part 3. We'll see. <clears throat> In any case, we are still on the fourth day of Enaz, 20 years since the revival. A cold wind has carried you truthbringers into the small hamlet called Oak Ridge. It is nestled in a narrow mountain pass, the town still very much within the clutches of the departing winter. But that is not what ails the town. Someone has reported deviancy in Oak Ridge, and it is your duty to find it and manage it to the best of your considerable abilities. Now, since it's been a while, if you would like to briefly remind everyone of your characters, Matt, let's start with you. Can you remind us of uh, Key? Yes. Um, Key is um, a dwarf. He's very quiet. Out of all the group, he's the one who'd kind of sit back and listen first. Um, he is dressed in kind of loose black robes, but two things immediately drawn to your eye. The first are ruby red slippers. And the second is spiraling down his right arm. There are claws terminating on a spectral hand above his own. <clears throat> Very good. Okay, so uh, key are. Um, uh, did, you didn't say your class, right? <laughs> In case oh, no. you didn't um, want to uh, reveal it yet. I don't sorry. know if we have. Used to Simon. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, all right, Mads, introduce us again to Ara. Yeah, so Ara Lanan is a um, quite an. He looks like a middle aged person, but he is a half elf, so. He ages slower. He's got sun-weathered skin um, with quite deep furrows near his eyes. And, you know, the furrows are more of like squinting and, you know, like these sort of um, lines as opposed to smiley lines. Um, and he's got deep um, set uh, uh, lines along his mouth. He uh, looks a little bit scruffy. He's got this dark... Um, black hair that's like salt and pepper but with a white streak running down the front and it's kind of up um, uh, in a I think it's in a ponytail I can't remember if it's half up or in a ponytail but it's gone undercut underneath and then he's got like a, sh a shaggy shaggy kind of uh, close cut stubble sort of thing and it just looks like he's hacked away with a dagger um, to manage his hair and he's just got very um, stoic and grim sort of look about him Sounds good. Oh, and and uh, do 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 are we? We're telling people what we are, right? Yeah. Uh, any details that you think are important or are immediately obvious about Ara that they should know? Uh, oh, he's got a uh, he's got a a lamp hanging from his pocket that's like got these ghostly white hands that are pushing up against it as if something's trying to escape. Right. And he's like packing in terms of like um uh in terms of equipment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds good. So that's Ara. Um, Simon, how about Halim? Halim um, is a relatively older gentleman um, in the 50s. Um, always smiling, a gentle smile, twinkling eyes, and crow's feet, um, and lots of smile lines on his face. Um, very weathered um, face with a moustache and um, gray hair that ends in white um, and the most obvious thing right now is that he's holding a, a longbow and is currently um, scanning the inside of the, the tavern and this longbow has um, very ornate sort of dirty ivory um, length to it apart from where the grip is which is uh, used to be a nice glittering gold but it's uh, it's a bit grubby now even okay. though it's been um, well preserved okay so that's Halim standing watch outside of the tavern looking in um, Mr. Roberts if you could introduce us to Tarwan once again 
Right. Well, Tarwan is, um, as I might have said before, uh, she is a half elf, but she um, radiates the sort of eternal youth of a classic elf. She is um, sporting uh, a crossbow, but mainly the most prominent thing is, is, is the quarter staff. Um, she's wearing a pristine um, outfit made of uh, animal skin, so white fur and a, and a long uh, sort of parted overcoat. Um, she has uh, hair that's, that's blonde, short at the sides and a longer, it, it, you know, in the top, interwoven in which is a sort of a circlet. Um, she uses seduction in a slightly unapproachable way. <laughs> Very good. And finally, um, Mr. Harris, if you could introduce both Calcor and perhaps very briefly uh, Krusiger. Yes. <laughs> okay, so Calcor is a, a paladin with a slightly overinflated sense of his own worth in the world. Uh, he used to be in the glory days uh, one of the leaders of the, uh, of the one of the battle armies or whatever. Um, and nowadays he's been sort of reduced to ferreting out petty criminals and has become somewhat bored by the entire exercise. He has become fat and lazy. Um, he's got a large portly belly um, and uh, is quick to wheeze when he gets into battle. <clears throat> he's also um, uh, got a large shield which is unmistakable and tends to have its own opinion <laughs> about a lot of things. Uh, and it's called Krusiger, and it was given to him by his superiors. Um, it basically floats and moves around, and it's an orb of knowledge sitting in the middle of this central part of the shield. Um, and they have a, a, a tempestuous relationship, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but uh, generally, he treats it uh, like an implement, and the implement does it, tries to not be treated the same way. Uh, he also has a sword called Seafoot, um, which uh, he uses. Uh, it's got some a few special abilities, like warning and stuff like that. And uh, he uses the combination of Krusiger and Seafoot to become incredibly lazy and nonchalant about his uh, his uh, uh, his ability to go into a bar and commandeer it. So. Uh, he also has a long, drooping moustache and sort of greasy uh, hair that he, you know, tries to comb back very carefully to sort of cover the balding spot that is now there. Um, so he tries to take care of his uh, his uh, his hair and stuff like that, but he's not doing a very good job of it. Okay, excellent. So, last time, the five of you rode into town on your horses, and you headed for the magistrate first. There. You learned a number of rumours from the nervous ma magistrate and from his surprisingly calm wife. Strange things were happening in the town, particularly shared visions among the population of terrible events that turned out to never happen. In one instance, they all dreamt that they were raided and killed by bandits, only for those same bandits to appear dead on the road the very next day. And a recent example was a flood from the mountains above, which never came. Besides some curiosities at the magistrate's home, the general impression you likely got was that the magistrate and the town are not on good, to good terms with each other. He is powerful, and he manages the business of the town, while the town works for him. Yet, when pushed, he done did not only cast aspersions on the many townsfolk that he seems to have disagreements with, but also on travellers coming through Oak Ridge in recent months. He did not trust them, but he could not tell you why or how they might be connected to the strange visions. When she finished at the magistrate's home, you departed for the High Tide Tavern, and some of you investigated an abandoned house along the way. The only thing that was interesting was a letter which you found to one Zeferi, written by a man named Polmar, whose contents you can still view in your handouts on Roll20, by the way. Then you entered the tavern and spoke to various people inside. A beautiful half-elven half woman at the bar, playing her flute. The matronly Bayora behind the bar, serving drinks and being protective of her friend. And that friend, Tamir, the bar's security guard, who seemed to be wearing an inappropriate battle trophy, which Kalkor inspected and then allowed him to wear again. 
The very last thing that happened before we left last time was Tawan approaching the bar and scrutinizing Beora. Something seemed to click, and at least Tarwan became aware that Biora may not be who she appeared to be. And under that knowledge, I believe the ball is in your court to uh, continue your investigations in whatever manner you see fit. So Excellent. So I haven't shared anything that I discovered nope. incidentally with everyone else. So no, you have um, not. My ne- <laughs> Just I'm putting confused. it out there. So I'm not. I don't want preemptive action. I'm very, very particular about this. <laughs> um, so um, I would like to send a message to. Is it Beor? Beora. Beora. Yeah. Beora. Okay. So uh, would you like to send me that privately on Discord? I will do that. In fact, that's. Discord, Discord. Very good. Let me just unmute myself because otherwise you're going to get the keyboard. <laughs> no worries. So as Tawan has approached the bar and is giving Biora an intent, scrutinizing gaze, um, or perhaps not that intently, but uh, at least taking a good look at Biora, um, is there any anything else that the rest of you want to be doing? And I will say, Simon, for, for Halim's uh, benefit, Nobody approaches the bar that seems suspicious at this moment in time. Okay. Nobody small. Nobody small, nobody big. So, is there anything that that has drawn your attention beyond Beora, or are you all kind of waiting to see what happens with that particular exchange? So, I believe Um, there's one person who's currently playing a flute, right? And that is correct, yes. The, uh, The lady at the bar here. Um, oh, by the bar as well. Yeah, right next to Tawan is the woman who is, has kind of, now that Tawan has approached, um, she had already turned away a little bit, and she's just kind of now playing the flute very much to herself, kind of um, avoiding any eye contact or contact with the situation that has been developing to her right uh, for the past few minutes. Um, What's the lady who's got um, white hair sitting at the table? Right. What, what, I've forgotten so, about her. So a rather tall woman, you think, probably some Goliath blood. Um, Goliath, yeah, yeah yes. that's it. Oh, um, yeah. She yeah. has uh, been watching everything um, with the sort of natural worried look that you've come to expect as you go anywhere in an official capacity. Mm-hmm. Truthbringers mm-hmm. do not inspire um, the kind of welcoming loyal Mm -hmm. and friendly uh thing um welcomes that you would like to have Uh, so she she's just kind of been watching and carefully um continued i think she was playing cards with her companion the other woman at the table Uh so um. okay i have seen Um, kevin sorry okay i would like you to roll a persuasion check um my dude, he was hiding something. Um, which dude was hiding something? The mall guy. The mall guy was hiding something. <laughs> um, so Tamir, the last thing you discovered um, was you handed him the mall and you asked him about the story of his uh, acquiring the armband that Calcor gave back mm-hmm. to him. Um. And he, I believe, did tell you briefly uh, an outline of that story of fighting on the front lines in the West mm-hmm. um, against his former people and winning it yeah. from one of the Mugamari, uh, these fearsome yeah. fighters from that place. But there was something that he withheld from me, I, I think I remember. Uh, it's quite possible, um, but um, if that is the case, then you will need to continue to quiz him about that. Okay. Um I'll clasp his, uh, I'll clasp his arm um, when I, after I, um, you know, like like a friendship, but you know, slightly intimidating sort of thing. Like you know, when you clasp arms like that, and I'd be like, end. As warriors, as brothers, there's more to this. He looks over to the bar where Beorna is standing, and 
extends the arm and like takes your arm and you said your strength score was not very high Zero. Uh, like <laughs> he t- it's, it's like when you were a child and you you shake hands with a grown man and like they just they don't even mean to but they just exert so much force on your hand that you're like whoa so it's that that kind of sense um as he takes your arm but he doesn't do anything to hurt you he just like shakes it um and then sits back down into the place where he was sitting um, previously, if you allow him, essentially moving past you to go sit back down. Yeah, I will, but I want to know more. Like, does he, like, I'll, I'll turn to face him as if I'm expecting an answer. To which question? For me as DM, what question specifically? It was just like, I was like, there's more to this story. I, I do not know what you mean. What is it you wish to know? And perhaps I will tell you, but I am not a storyteller. For that, you must... Speak to the performer, and he gestures across the bar to the woman with the flute, um, who probably briefly catches that sound and just turns away a little more. Like, <laughs> please don't. Um, but yeah, so he seems reluctant, but if you wish to ask him specific questions, then you're free to do so. I don't have specific questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just Uncle know he's hiding something. How cool right there, isn't he? Uh, standing next to this guy with a mole. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. He's quite bored with this particular thing. He turns around. Oh, more beer. Bring it over. All right. Okay. Like gestures. And then turns around and then sort of leans back nonchalantly against the bar, sort of eyeing this guy up and down. He's already had a bit of a run in with this guy, but he's not at all worried about him. Okay. Um, Beora takes a, a moment longer than maybe you would have liked, uh, but she does come over with several mugs of ale that have been freshly tapped um, and places them before you and before um, Tamia and before uh, Ara as well, if, uh, if Ara accepts. Yeah. Well, that's mine. Well, what are you having? <laughs> that sounds right. Scoops the beers towards him. Ah, <laughs> uh, you have no sense of humor, you lot. Um, I will say, even even just passively, you do catch perhaps just the briefest twitch of a smirk. Like in Tamiya, he does appreciate that kind of humor. Uh, it seems, but he's very reluctant to uh, um, to give that away. <clears throat> so, meanwhile, follow up. Oh, sorry, Key. Yes, uh, I'm just saying. Uh, while this is happening and everyone's at the bar, Key's standing in the doorway. Um, he's kind of leaning back in, in the shadows, kind of sitting quietly as, well, leaning quietly as is his want. And he's just continually scanning the room, looking for those who are showing an interest in us as a group. Okay. And those who are actively trying to not be seen. Okay. Um, so you're, sorry to recap, you're trying to see who's paying attention but trying not to be noticed paying attention. Would that be about uh, right? So I'm trying to find those who are paying attention Yeah. and those who are trying to avoid us at all costs. Okay. Um, make a general insight check for the entire chamber, essentially. Um, I will say, uh, so Tamir is back in his place here. Um, I will say, Ara, as you look over at Tamir, you just see behind him the enormous war horse uh, Jester, just passing by the window outside, and kind of looking inside <laughs> for a moment, and then oh, moving on. <clears throat> um, animal gets out of the way. <laughs> um, and at that command, of course, Jester turns around and disappears from view. Um, what was your insight check, Matt? Uh, Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, I think, in general, um, you definitely note that. The two at the table, um, the larger Goliath blooded woman is definitely paying attention to, to your entire group, um, playing cards, but just looking over and just making sure that like no one is approaching or if someone is that, that she'll see. Um, <coughs> whereas uh, the other woman is distinctly avoiding paying any attention to you or anyone else uh, of the Truthbringers. Um, the man at the bar, so that would be Ed, uh, this this man here with the the, the young man with the red hair, um, is still just 
completely enraptured with the performance, even though it's it's not something super special. It's just a bard playing uh, at the bar, but uh, he's completely enraptured with her and is at, like genuinely just not paying attention to the rest. Um, and that is about it in terms of guests. Um, the elven or the half elven woman at the bar herself, very clearly just avoiding uh, the gaze of anyone in the group. <clears throat> Um, on that topic, yes. Um, from all of the interactions I've w witnessed so far, does it look like Tamir, the um, guard, is fairly familiar with everybody in the, the bar right now? Um, he seems to know them all. I would say you can make one inside check, but at disadvantage, just because um, you haven't seen him interact with a lot of people. <laughs> I got a twenty. Yeah, and. <laughs> oh boy! I I, I rewatched um, the thing recently, and I, the, my first roll last time was a twenty. So there we go. Yeah. Well, actually, it was a one. No, uh, the the no, very first one was and then twenty. A one. Yeah, and then the one, and then another twenty. So. Oh, well, let's see. Was it? Oh, sorry. Well, yeah. there we go. Sorry, I I, I remember <laughs> the advantage roll or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. You go from a one to a twenty. <laughs> <laughs> so with the with the disadvantage, fifteen. It's 15. Okay. Um. He seems um, he seems comfortable with everyone that is near the bar. You have no idea of his relationship with the two that are f sitting further away. But everyone at the bar doesn't seem to draw any special attention from him except for the Truthbringers. Now, that may be because of you guys being who you are and as intimidating as you can possibly be. But you get the sense that there's not that much unusual going on. But from the description that you've given us so far, it does seem like Tamir is kind of doing what Biora says, right? Sorry? What from the description that you've given so far, it seems like the guard is doing what Biora says. Like that seems to be the drink. case, yes. Yeah, that does seem to be the case. But when we arrive, the guard is supposed to be with the magistrate? No, no, he is just with the bar. Okay. He's just okay. with the bar. Cool. Thank you. Sorry, just answering the message. Okay, so um, Ara and uh, Kalkor, I think the two of you are the closest to any sort of confrontation or, or at least uh, semblance thereof. So I'm going to turn to him and say, how do you know so much of the Mugamari? Did you infiltrate them? I once lived, lived in their lands. They protected me as a child. They were once the highest ideal that I could strive for. Every boy and girl dreamed of being Mugamari, of being chosen on our 17th day. But I was not chosen. Instead, the world fell apart. I came here and I found a new purpose in life. And you followed the Raven Queen? among two others, yes. I was misguided, as many were before we found the path. Mm. He just kind of stares back and then takes a sip from his ale. I would rather enjoy it. Like He's not intending to do anything to help me. <laughs> I know. Do I do I do I believe him about the misguided thing? Um, you can also roll an inside check. It is uh, it's a night of inside checks. Okay, and also where did he look? Um, every time that he's looked away, it's always in the sense of, um, like a child looking at its parent or a, a husband looking at a wife, like looking for instruction. So he just looks at Mayora generally so you saw him look over at her she wasn't even paying attention and then he just looked back to you and answered you i'm gonna turn my eyes to biora what was your insight check um sorry uh, da, 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 da. it's pretty good as far as i remember my insight is oh it's not that great okay so that is a uh 12. a 12. um Nevertheless, uh, based on his role, you do catch um, a hint of deception 
regarding that particular item that you asked after his misguidedness. Maybe he doesn't quite feel that he was misguided at the time after all, but uh, that is something you can push him on if you like. No, I won't push him on that. Friend. You're a great warrior, no? He looks at the, the, the Mugamara patch on his arm and then at his, at his weapon standing like between the two of you. I am better than most. And why do you look to this barkeep for everything? He looks over again as if not realizing what he'd been doing. I simply look after my friend. What are you implying? Insight check! Insight check! <laughs> Do I believe him? But yes, go ahead and roll yeah. an insight check. I'm going to answer a message real quick. Um, yeah. is, uh, Kempcore is also paying attention to this because he's got nothing else better to do and he's actually vaguely interested in this line of... <laughs> So he would like to know as well if he's paying it, if he's uh, like. <laughs> Hold on, let me just quickly go through. I need to use, sorry, I need to get the Ara dice because I've all only got a Lithia dice at the moment. Um, yeah, the ones that aren't as pretty. The ones that like are a little bit, you know, more moody like this one. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin, can I make a, a, an insight check? 15. Well? Certainly you may. It's a 15. Okay. So one moment until uh, Calcor also has his result. Yeah, it might not be uh, 12. <laughs> okay. Um, so remind me again what exactly you are. You're disbelieving his story of... Um, looking him, after his friend. Looking after his friend. I feel, like, I feel like my feeling is is that he is taking orders about something. Right. Um, in the words I'm looking after my friend he spoke very deliberately which stands out to you as not something that he would normally do he's not the, the type for that sort of thing um, but he spoke very deliberately but he did speak truth like there was not, not a lie to be detected in him he didn't twitch nervously he just very carefully chose his words so he's hiding something, but like he knows he's hiding it. If that makes I, sense, I allow you to interpret that as you wish. So uh, okay. that is uh, the the fifteen and the twelve of it. What can I see is happening between Bayora and Tarwin? Okay, um, yeah. make a <coughs> make a perception check. Ooh, that's not very good. Make a distrust check. <laughs> <laughs> 14. Yeah, I was just drinking a glass of wine. Okay. Um, what you see is, like, Beora is just ca casually walking behind the bar, topping off glasses or taking them away uh, where necessary. But she does sometimes, briefly, or, or perhaps it's just your mind playing tricks on you, but you think that she might be looking in Tawan's direction more frequently than in anyone else's. There's no words being exchanged between them. Uh, very specifically, actually, they don't speak to each other um, after Tawan was, was, I believe, served a drink. But, um, but they just look at each other sometimes, or look in each other's direction from time to time. Okay, and is Tarwin drinking at the bar during an interrogation? Is that normal behaviour from Tarwin? I would leave that up to you, Tarwin. Yes, she she she's definitely um, you know more subtle than <laughs> some people in her investigations. She, you you know that she tends not towards brute force, but through to subtlety. So. You can assume that she's being subtle as per usual, if you like. And what techniques would I know that she uses while being subtle? <coughs> I'm um, trying to avoid messy gaming here, that's all. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, you, you, you're clearly familiar with her getting out dragon chess as, as a means of um, 
throwing people off their guard. Um, she also has a reputation for um, gaining some level of trust from suspects. <laughs> so what you okay player to player I, would I know that you're likely to be talking to them telepathically I think given the amount of messaging that was going on in the last session <laughs> I think you, you, you know that would be the first thing you think of okay but she's right. not showing any outward signs of that and does Tarwin look well I mean aside from obviously the odd giveaway <laughs> yeah and, and does Tarwin What's Tarwin's expression? Any concerns? Any um, giving anything away? She looks away? serene. She, she 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 looks as though you know nothing is occurring except a mild interest in what people are, are doing. So she she you know she could be scrutinising people, but not in a worried way. Just in a in a I'm gathering information kind of way. Okay. And last question, Kevin. Can I see through that if possible? See through that with with what intent, as in to to see knowing through. knowing Tarwin as I do. Mm -hmm. um, is there any subtle signs that he, that she is concerned? Okay, I would like you. So Tarwin, I would like you to roll. Uh, a, I'll tell you both what to roll, and then I'll okay. tell you what the results are. <laughs> And tell me, of course, in the chat. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'm having such an average <laughs> thing of rolling. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to just tell you the result, or do you want no, me to type it write in? it in the chat as well, so that there is uh, no knowledge whatsoever? Okay. I hope that answers your question, Simon. Thank you. Um, it does. Okay. Um, Hallam is getting very still, which is normally a sign that he's going to start moving very quickly. Okay. I would like you to also roll a perception check, a general okay. one. Um, in the meantime, uh, Tamir sitting with Ara and Kalkor. Um, what's your follow up? About the friend thing? Yeah. So you you, dis you 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 wanted to see if you believed him. Um, he seemed to be telling the truth very deliberately. Um. I'm just going to stare him down. See if there's like any response. He kind of like notices what you're doing. Settles into his chair a little more and leans on the bar. And just leans in and stares back at you. You get He's the not intimidated. You get the impression he has to deal with a lot of people trying to like walk over him in this bar because okay. he's the only person, and probably with that magistrate nearby, it's not yeah. always uh, on, on good terms. So, okay. um, yeah, he just kind of almost like a joke, you know, like a very serious and possibly dangerous joke. He just kind of settles in, just stares back at you. You're not one for dissembling. <coughs> if you tell me what that means, then perhaps I can tell you if I am or not. You're not good at lying. I do not aim to be. I hear that in this empire we prefer truth. Mm, we do. And that is what I strive for I... as well. Yet you seem to be very careful with the truth. Why? This truth should flow naturally. That is the way. I can only answer as I answer. I do not know what you expect of me. I do not hide any oddities about myself. 
and he gestures for the armband. Tell me, friend. It's been very interesting. Anyway, <laughs> turns round, <laughs> swipes up, <laughs> swipes up his uh, point, and uh, you carry on, Hera. I'll um, I'm just going to uh, interrogate this pint here, <laughs> and he wanders off across <laughs> the room. <laughs> You wanted to follow up, Ara? Yeah. There have been whisperings of dreams and strange goings on. Yes. What do you know of them? I have had the same ones that everyone has. Which are? Calamity. <coughs> that then does not occur. Do you recognize anything in it? I recognize our place here. Our town, the people, everything happens as it could happen, but it does not. What happened instead then? Tell me. Nothing. Bandits gone to kill us, they end up dead on the road the next day. Did you recognize them? No. Except from the, dr from the dream. But otherwise, no. I do not make friends with bandits. Um, when Calcol sort of wanders across the room, is there any tables that are kind of free or whatever? Quite a few, actually. Um, well, quite a few. There's two tables that are essentially unoccupied at the moment. One of them, I believe, I, I'm not sure if Tawan left anything behind on it from the casting of your ritual. Um, but yeah. otherwise, both of the other tables are free. Uh, so Calco's gonna um, he's gonna wander over and then um, reach over and grab one of the chairs of one of the free tables away from everybody else. Um, and then uh, just before he sits down, he's going to reach down and like press on the chair to make sure it will take his weight. <laughs> Trying to do so without showing that to anybody, and then carefully line it up down. And then he'll look over at Krusiger and kind of like. <laughs> gesture to him for him to come over. Okay. Krusiger is ho hovering around. Yep. So Krusiger begins moving over. Um, let me finish this message real quick. Okay. So Krusiger hovers over and joins you. Um, uh, Krusiger, make yourself useful for a change. I want to know if there's any Anything where people get visions, anything that you know of in the past, like rituals or anything like that, which involve uh, removing people uh, as part of a ritual, something like that. Hmm? If you can do that, just what what comes to mind? Uh, quick question for you: What was his? What did, was the specialty we gave him again? Uh... Uh, he had knowledge of um, virtually all of the rituals and arcane right. and all of the local towns and places inside. Right, uh, right, right. The right. With a focus on demons somewhere in there, right? That's what I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anything occult plus anything that was the local history, knowledge, and like basically a map. Okay. So he, um, Krusiger, is silent for a moment as it thinks again. And then the voice begins piping up um, a little too loudly, perhaps, as the whole tavern can just listen in, but uh, begins telling you um, of various demon cults whose worship and attempted summonings of, you know, greater demons to all the way to the, like arch demons and devils um, can invoke all kinds of visions, but they are usually very, um, very destructive and not... Uh, like they they don't leave you well rested. Typically, they're meant to exhaust people in the area and 
kind of instill fear and terror in them. <clears throat> so that that's probably a diatribe of a good minute or two of Crusader just talking before the whole tavern. Uh, so <laughs> while <coughs> while Crusader's talking, obviously I've been mm -hmm. watching everyone quite in intently going round. Yeah. Is anyone reacting in a way that's more than just interest? In a sense that is anyone looking guilty? Well, I would say, interestingly enough, it's probably Tamir who gets distracted from the conversation with Ara to listen to Krusiger. Mm. But it's 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 not an um, inappropriate interest. It's just information that he hasn't heard before, so he just kind of like mm. gets distracted and then he kind of starts listening and then apologizes for for getting distracted. Um, but of the rest of the tavern. Um, Beora just shoots Krusiger a, a very slightly dirty look of, you know, stop disturbing my tavern. Um, the flute stops playing, and um, the lady who was playing it looks a bit troubled, but it's hard to, to guess why exactly, but she does look troubled once Krusiger begins talking. Um, and she actually ends up engaging in conversation with the young man at her side, um, babbling about nonsense. He he seemed very taken with her, so it's kind of bothering her a bit, but she allows it for the moment. And the two at the table um, continue to engage in their practice of avoiding the truth bringers as much as they can. But the, the Crucicer bit seems to actually um, give them a bit of relief, as it seems to be a distraction that they are not a part of. So... <clears throat> they continue playing cards. <clears throat> Thank you. Happy to. So, um, once Krusiger is close to finishing, um, let me see here if I've missed any messages. So, I'm not right. waiting for anything. I'm going to, mm -hmm. as soon as I, I, as soon as that happens, I'm going to do something. Okay. Um, but I didn't want to interrupt in case anyone was in the middle of, apart from Krusiger. No, that's yeah, fine. That's in the fine. middle of a... Oh, we don't okay. care about him. The, what, <laughs> so your your thing probably occurs like your your noticing of it probably occurs about in the middle of Crucigas. Um, I figured. Uh, explanation. Right. Um, I will walk to the door, um, and just push it open enough that um, everyone inside can see me. Okay. And just say fairly quietly, but loud enough that um, all of the group can hear me. Mm -hmm. Fire screams. As anyone... And then sort yeah. of beckon backwards with my head. Anyone looking towards the, the southwest window does indeed see a faint orange glow uh, rising above um, in, in the sky. <clears throat> so, what would you all like to do? Does it uh, invoke any reaction, or do, do, do you are you happy to uh, not investigate? Um, he will nod. He'll step outside, and then he'll just kind of, if he can, take a few steps back, and then run at the inn, jump and just run up the wall to the roof. Okay, while that's happening, okay. um, after I said fire screams, which was mainly directed at this group. Mm -hmm. um, what is uh, specifically Beora's reaction? Okay. So the reaction uh, from Beora is um, she looks towards you very sharply and then immediately just kind of goes back to, to cleaning the mug, assuming that your message is not for her. Um, but you do... I mean, it's hard for her to hide this. Uh, she, she looks over at um, Tamir and she just kind of nods. And Tamir is the one who gets up and starts heading for the door with his maul in hand. She, okay, does she look surprised? What, any emotional reaction to it? Uh, you can make an insight check for that if you like. No. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Impossible to say. She is, she is a closed door. Or closed book, rather. Um... So yeah, that that's impossible to say. But Ara at that mess uh, at that message, 
Tamiya right beside you grabs them all and says, uh, I suppose we should go and look, yes? Yes. What does okay. um, Sorry, the... What exactly did you call out? Fire screams. Um, okay. what is the what was the what's the response of the beautiful half elf? Um she falls silent and um the man at her side continues talking to her but she um she just grabs the pack that is standing by her feet and pulls it into her lap and kind of begins going through it but she doesn't produce anything she's just looking through it looking through her supplies and that's it. <clears throat> All right, I'm just watching um, Key as yeah. they go zooming yeah. up the roof. So Key, you you uh, you head up the roof on the outside. I'm I'm guessing, right, to get a better look. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I will write to you what you see uh, from your position. Uh, Tarwan will get up and saunter over. She'll leave a glass behind. Um, and just saunter over and put her head out the door and see what all the fuss is about. Uh, meanwhile, um, Calcor will uh, telepathically send a quick message to um, to Helen. Let me know if there's anything that you need me for, but otherwise, just don't bother me. <laughs> then he takes a glance in your direction and then takes a, a large squig from his beer and looks <laughs> thoroughly bored. <laughs> all right, you, you get a wide smile from Helen and a nod. But otherwise, no reply. Okay. So, um, Tamir and potentially uh, Ara uh, and Tarwan can arrive at the door and get ready to, to move with you. Um, getting you an answer now, Key. I haven't taken my eyes off the aura. Okay. Um, she is watching Tamir mostly, just watching him go. Um, even even without a check, you do catch a glimpse of uh, concern, worry for him, but possibly just because of whatever this might might imply um, as a danger. So, um, from the the roof, still looking out, mm -hmm. he will look down and. Um, Telepathy message, Helen. Just saying. Um, behind the warehouse, dark shapes. Some large. Some large. Did you say? Yes. Uh, do we know of a warehouse? Is that something we pass? Yes. We only passed a guard place in me. The the warehouse. I mean, you kind of guessed, but there there is essentially a larger building than average with no windows, uh, which okay. stands on the west side of the of the stream. Which, um, if you like, I'll just quickly drag you to it, which is here. Oh, yeah, 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 I can see that. Yeah. Um, um, we don't know what that warehouse <laughs> is for, do we? You don't know, but in a town like okay. this, it's probably all purpose. Um, um, and if I recall correctly, <laughs> the main business. The main business here is wood, wood right? uh, and um, furs, wood and furs. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I will glance at um, Tarwin and raise an eyebrow. Oh. So, because I was slightly distracted, can you? Once I get to the door, what can I see? Repeat for me. So, as any of you come out of the uh, come out of the tavern towards the southwest, across the the bank behind that large building, you just see a sky that is faintly glowing orange from a fire that has built up, uh, presumably, like from the size of it, in a house behind the warehouse. All right, uh, Taiwan will will um, oops, will raise an eyebrow, Halim. Rather coincidental, one might think. A fire whilst we are here, an obvious distraction. Ignore it. 
The timing is suspicious. Do tell me if there is any news. I am waiting. And I'll smile very widely. I'll ask to the, to the bar at large, because I don't think I will have gone outside, outside. Um, I will probably be just at the door. Mm -hmm. So it's normal for you to have fires here? Beora is actually the one who pipes up, shaking her head, and she says, No, it is not normal. In fact, I'm quite concerned, but it is up to the magistrate and the people to do something. But hopefully you and Tamiya can provide aid. Hopefully. <laughs> no. Very well. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna. I think at that, uh, Ara looks a little bit troubled before he just kind of hardens his face again, and his like eyes become flinty. Okay. Um, sorry, I was just sending a message to Matt. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. So, um, take inventory. Who's going and who's staying, or is everyone staying? Which is also fine. I'm just asking. Halim is Tawan. just waiting. Sorry, sorry, go on. No, I was going to say that Tawan is is hovering near the door. She's not showing any signs of of, of going to mm -hmm. investigate. She's waiting to see what other people are doing. Right. <laughs> Halim is waiting to see what Key does. Um, <laughs> well, Key. Um, keeps looking, and he kind of looks down to Hallam again, um, and says uh, telepathically, "More figures, more screams." And I think he's probably going to start walking down the wall. Uh, Going towards his horse. Oh, it's not that far, is it actually? No, it's it's a very village. small village. <laughs> yeah, um, probably can look back and look it over. Um, and again, just telepathically, we'd just say innocence yeah. with a kind of questioning lilt. So throughout this exchange, and you guys kind of hesitating to to choose whether you wish to go or not. Um, Tamir has been waiting, you know, it's kind of like ready to go, and then seeing that you don't go, he just sprints off um, in the direction of the fire, uh, quite concerned, apparently, with uh, with what this might mean. So um, he, he rushes off without you, unless you choose to stop him somehow. Um, well, he was heading down and heading in that direction. Right. So he'll try and match pace. Does Halim, um, does Halim, like... Verbalize what what um, Key has said. Uh, where are you? You're right at the back, aren't you? Um, I'm at the door. No, I'm at the door. Oh, okay. So you're with. Oh, you need one. to. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah. If if I'm aw aware that you need to know um, something, then I'll quietly just repeat the, the same message, okay. but only for the the three of us to hear. Okay. Fine. Um, I will. Run, double dash, and bonus action <laughs> to okay. try and get there. <laughs> okay. Very good. Kevin, <clears throat> what, what time of day is it right now? So it is actually uh, night time. Um, so the, the, the sun has gone down. It was already going down as you came into the, into the village. And during your time with the magistrate, it, it fully set. So now it's uh, proper night time. So keep that in mind. If you don't have uh, dark vision, that might impede your ability. There is a, a half moon out, so it's not like you're blind, but you'll have disadvantage on trying to see certain things. Um, okay. However, um, in what is order... My... Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, um, what is my range currently then in Half-Light? Um, I'm not sure that your ability should tell you... Um, if you do, you don't have dark vision, right? No. Okay, so your your range is normal. Uh, I'm pretty sure, but um, you have disad. No, you just have your normal ranges. I think on your attacks. Yeah, and stuff. It's, it's just about perception and viewing. Um, okay. So the warehouse is in range. 
Yes, I'm but and the, the right. fire the fire stands out regardless, right? Like the fire against the sky is very obvious. Um, yeah, I'll like stay that? where I am for now. Okay. Uh, before I run off, can I turn to um, Tawan? Mm-hmm. Definitely, yes. Maybe, maybe the young girl was right. You may be best to investigate here further. Before I run off. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. She can take it or leave it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Tamir went first. I know Key went after Tamir. So, and you're probably just as fast because he doesn't have your uh, special movements. So, Ninety. Gonna move you to catch up, and then Ara will be very close behind, uh, just because you started later. Um, Tawan, Halim, and Kalkor remain at the tavern. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Kalkor yeah. is still nursing his beer. He's actually paying vague attention, but he's like basically okay. making out that he's not. Okay. He's um, mostly keeping an eye on on the others. Um, but uh, he probably leans over his shoulder and uh, when nobody's looking, it's like, hey, Kusuga, keep your, keep your noise down whenever you're telling me about stuff. That was inappropriate. <laughs> okay. Um, so, as you, as the two of you, Ki and Ara, come across the bridge, you see five smaller figures spread out throughout the opening between the buildings. The building at the back here is, uh, at the bottom is uh, is burning. And um, there is one larger figure, just in ornate, f like red and orange uh, robes in garb. All of them have a strange glisten to their skin as if they were wet, but there's not been any rainfall that could justify that. Um, and you see around their feet um, several discarded items of clothing and um, and other items that uh, you have no no place for. Also, as you arrive, I would like you to roll initiative. And um, I just wanted to ask, how much movement did that take? Uh, so getting there would have been. Uh, let me count it right. Sorry. So to. Let me see, is this the counting one? Yes. So it would have been, it's actually a little more than what you could do with the double da or triple dash, but yeah, for, for story purposes, you arrive essentially here yes. with your full movement. Fine. Um, Fine. But okay. we'll start the round, or we'll start we'll start the combat. Um, yep. As oh. it happens, as the combat starts, you all of you, throughout the entire village, your voices are naturally magnified and a deep, roaring, unnatural sound tells you the following. Look to the skies and rejoice. You are graced with the sign of our mother, and she will relieve you of this mortal struggle. Do not fear. The end of your suffering is nigh. And there is a glow, like the glow from the, from the uh, burning house almost seems to join a red glow in the sky where there is suddenly appearing a comet. Distant still, it's not crashing to the earth right now, but there is a red comet in the sky as well. Um, and that is where we begin our combat. What the fuck, man? It's <laughs> <laughs> perfectly like normal, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> that coming? I know, I thought this was intrigue, and now there's comets falling from the sky. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm just going to roll uh, my stuff in here, but uh, you guys can tell me your uh, initiatives in one moment, please. How do I how do I roll initiative? You can in, just roll um, with your regular dice and add your initiative modifier from your sheet. Because uh, I'll be writing it down. It won't be in, in all time. Oh, okay. Fine, fine, fine. Yeah, no worries. Are we all rolling initiative? or is it Yes, just... everyone. Everyone. Uh, because okay, even if you're yeah. at the tavern, you'll be acting with uh, this particular initiative. Okay, so just out of interest, basically Seifert, which is um, sort of gently hovering, or he mm -hmm. has him gently hovering next to him, uh, will glow rapidly and pulse. Mm -hmm. uh, um, both Halim and um, 
and uh, uh, let me see. Sorry, both Halim and um, and Tarwan uh, will see this, and they've seen it before. And it's normally when there's any danger. Um, it will stop them being surprised, but um, that's about it at the moment. Um, meanwhile, I roll with advantage on initiative. <laughs> yes. Which is just uh, well, a terrible roll. One moment, one moment on the initiatives, because I'm writing down the other ones first. Could we go in like 25 to 20 and then yes, down yes. like that? Okay, so anyone above 25, uh, 20 uh, in initiative? No? Between 20 and 15. Yes. 17. 17 for 18. Ara and 18 for Key. Okay. Um, between 15 and 10. 15. 15 for Halim and Kalkor. 12. Okay. That was with advantage. <laughs> <laughs> I need that sword. And um, Tarwan, what is your initiative? Five. Five, okay. Okay, so first to act is key. You have rushed to the scene with um, with uh, Tamir by your side, and um, yeah, uh, you see the scene before you. As far as you can tell, they were either born out of the fire or they're the ones who started it. But um, the larger figure is standing with its back to you, while the other ones have all turned towards you guys. And there is a few bodies actually on the ground here. My apologies, I forgot to, to move them. So yeah, what would you like to do, Keith? Are all three of these buildings um, warehouses? No, as far as you can tell, the other ones seem to be regular houses or were regular houses. Um, it's just this building on the right side here that is a, uh, a warehouse. It's distinctly it's marked by the lack of windows. And it's uh, a house that's on fire at the back. Yes. But the front house is not. This house is on fire. Yeah. Uh, let me just draw a big red shape. This one is on fire. Um, as we're running over, can... I don't think maybe this may be a reaction. The house that's left... Mm -hmm. Is it possible to tell like, are people at the windows? Um, are there screams coming from it at all? Actually, the front door is open, and mm -hmm. um, the two bodies that you see lying on the ground, uh, you have a suspicion that they may have come from that house. Okay. Zero wins, you know, dead or dying. Quite, quite likely, oh. yes. <clears throat> well, in that case, um, Key kind of sees the, the, the blood and the bodies of innocents. And his face just kind of gets overcome. He's usually a very kind of gentle, a very quiet, sort of a background person. You don't really notice he's there. But he just gets this scowl. Um, and the tattoo that kind of snakes down his, his arm. Um begins to, to kind of emanate black and kind of in front of him there comes kind of black inky claw tendrils mm -hmm. coming out of his hand. Yep. Uh, so he's going to kind of go forward his full movement, which I think is 35? Should be 35, yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I just <laughs> squished all the across yeah. the page. So yeah, um, feel free to move your token exactly where you want to be. Yeah. Uh, you can measure out just in squares, like each square is five feet. So, um, yeah. it's uh, do you so do you do with a diagonal? Is it's five? Everything's uh, five. 15. Just for for oh. simplicity's sake, it's it's five. He's going to kind of come to here. Okay. And um, <coughs> these inky black tendrils mm -hmm. um, are going to uh, 
attack the the, the chappy, the fire person. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. So, Key, you rush forward, your tendrils, your, your tattoos and tendrils activate, and you can feel the power come to life. And you rush into place, and you stop actually just at the right distance, so you're not in immediate danger yourself. And you begin right. to attack in, in the fashion that you choose. Um, what did you roll? A unnatural 20. Unnatural 20 hits. Hmm. So, you're faced with this, like, fresh... Uh, being up close now, the, the best impression that I can give you is a freshly born lizard. Um, mm. It looks dragonborn, but like the scales are still wet with slime. Even the clothes themselves seem to have come out somehow with this creature itself. And um, it has in its hands a, a halberd and then at the belt a short sword. And it just kind of stands ready. And as you come close, it tries to defend itself, but just utterly fails as the inky black tendrils form into... A, a minute, like another version of your fist, and shoot out and um, hit it wherever you wish to hit it. Uh, how much damage do you do? Um, uh, Thirteen. Wow. So uh, you you hear a loud crunch of scales being broken as you impact this this creature. And. He's kind of really quite um, annoyed. Mm -hmm. So he's going to use um, spin to key point for a bonus action to do two more. Okay. Strikes. I will say at this level, you also have one more attack from your normal attack. So you have an extra attack regardless, and then two more yeah. on your bonus. Well, you know, I'll do that one first. Okay. See if I can Sounds good. Whack. Yeah. So many. Um, so many attacks. That is a 15. A 15 does hit. It almost blocks you, like it almost parry, the creature almost managed to parry the blow, but the ink tendril, as flexible as it is, just kind of wraps around the, the, the halberd once and then smashes it in the face anyway. And that one is 13 points of damage. Wow, those are some crunchy hits. Oof. The power, and yeah. the, the force, it's... um. Yeah. Uh, yes, force. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. It's it's yeah. very powerful. Okay. Um, so that those, are both your, hits? those are both hits, and then you have either one more attack or two more if you indeed spend a key point for a flurry of blows. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's going to town on this one. Okay. <laughs> That's good. For spending a key point. Um, go, key, go. Go, so, go. <laughs> two swift blows of the tendrils, and then you kind of fall into a position um, to, to ready yourself, but instead you're just in the flow and immediately fall into the next two attacks easily, trying again to hit it. Um, what did you roll to hit? Okay, so that one, well, first one was a nine. Okay, so the first one, it actually, the you managed to connect with part of the armor that the creature is wearing underneath the clothes, and you find more resistance than you expected. Uh, and the second was a 17. So the 17 does hit. So correcting now to make sure that you don't hit that armor again, you just go for the face one more time and it just crunches right across the jaw. And you just like, you probably hear part of the jaw dislocating. Like immediately oh, the, the tongue is kind of hanging out. This creature already looks in a ton of pain. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage. Not so much that it was eight. Okay. Like I said though, nonetheless, you've <laughs> delivered three heavy blows. Um, and the fact that like, this creature is hardy enough to still be standing, but barely. Barely. Um, so that is action, bonus action, movement. Um, anything you want to communicate telepathically to Ara who, or to uh, Tamir, who are with you? Uh, not this time. I think he was just kind of... Okay, sounds good. Then Ara, you are next the on the initiative. Is he within five feet of anyone? Because I I missed with the uh, uh, what the range of the um of the inky claws are. Um, no, he is not within no. five feet of anyone. He's not. Okay, fine. I'm gonna bonus action hide. Okay. No tree there. <laughs> okay, so you weren't spotted yet. So as you come rushing yeah. out, um, rather than going from the bridge straight towards the the the, the fight, 
you just kind of de- uh, diverge a little bit from that course, hide behind the tree, go ahead and roll your stealth roll. With the advantage, I believe, that your cloak affords you. Yeah. Oh, I needed that. Um, no, those weren't very good rolls. Um, where is my stealth? Please be good. Oh, that's not bad. Um, so that is 19. 19. Uh, okay, so you feel uh, like, you know, this is your profession. You're good at hiding. So you blend into the tree and you stand still for just that half second to make sure that you, you know, don't leave anything whirling around. And then mm-hmm. what do you do next? I'm going to take out my heavy crossbow. Okay. And I am going to... I get one shot. One, one, don't I? Uh, yes, yeah. I think with the, with yeah, the rogue. Yeah, yeah. With the bonus action. Yeah. So I'm going to take one shot at the um, big bad. Mm-hmm. Okay, so at the big one. So you uh, peek out from behind the tree. Uh, yeah. What kind of crossbow is this? Heavy. Heavy. Okay, yeah. Then you've so got like 120 foot range. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are you giggling about? <laughs> heavy. Heavy. It's a heavy one. <laughs> <laughs> so heavy. We're going to find out. It's going to be like one shot for the thing. Uh, right, here we go. So, come on. Oh, yeah! Um, that's, a, uh, that's a 19 plus eight i think yeah that will hit, plus eight. <laughs> that will hit so go ahead and roll damage oh, just, it's so... just hit uh, including your sneak attack damage as you are hitting. oh i forgot about that i forgot yes. about the sneak attack that's exciting oh, don't worry i i remember everything all the time so it's ridiculous <laughs> okay this so, is gonna be excruciatingly so powerful. it's a seven plus three is ten for mm-hmm. my for my normal one and yeah. then for my sneak attack it's 3d6 I think. Because you were... Check. Hold on, let me check that. I was hidden. No, uh... no, but the sneak attack is correct. I'm just thinking... Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I know why it's... Yeah, no, that's correct. Yeah, 3d6. Okay, come on. Okay. Uh, I instinctively... So that's a... Sorry. <laughs> so that's a, a four, a three, and a five. Um, so that's a nine plus three is... 9 plus 3 is 12. 22. 22. Very nice. So, um, let me check this real quick. So, as you um, as you swing out from behind the tree, the crossbow at the ready, you know, you check the lock or the, 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 the string, uh, and then you swing out, you aim, and you fire perfectly. Like, there, there's no question about that. But uh, as the uh, bolt hits, or where it should be, it should have sunk in into the flesh. It instead pinks off the armor. It does seem to leave a mark, but it is not nearly as effective as you hoped it would be. This is essentially me saying it seems to have some kind of resistance to um, non-magical damage. So that is your bonus action and your action. Um, is there anything else you would like to do with uh, Ara? You still have a lot of movement, or you have still have your movement in any case. I can't believe that I'm gutted. Uh, Very sad. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go to the next tree. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you you can move your own token. So you have control of your oh, token. Can so, I? Yeah, so you can move it up to the amount of uh, feet that um, <clears throat> that is appropriate for you. Um, so next up is uh, going 10, to be Tamiya. 15. Tamiya is going to one, two, three, four. Actually, no, he's going to one, two, three, four, five. Uh, can he get there? Is the question. Yes, Tamiya can. So Tamiya rushes into combat with the other one, seeing that Key seems to have control of one at least. Uh, Tamiya is going to rush into combat with one of the other creatures, and um, he doesn't say anything, but. As he rushes into combat, um, there is just a brief moment where uh, Key, you think you see a, a sort of brief flash of white light emit from him as he raises his weapon mm-hmm. and he just begins to swing uh, into this creature. So he's going to make his two attacks. Um, that will be with the maul. 
And that is, I believe, two hits. So he deals 22 and 24. Jesus. Barbarians, man. Um, <laughs> that is 46 <laughs> points of damage. Um, oh, it's so wow. So as he, as he comes rushing up, you just hear two crunches, and then you see like the creature that he hit just topple over and grasping at its stomach where he buried the second hit. And he just wrenches the maul free, and he just stands at the ready to attack even uh, even more. Um, that is Tamir's turn. Hanim, you are on. All right. I feel like I have a lot of questions. Um... That is fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, you mentioned a comet. Yes, <laughs> that is correct. Where okay. is it going? How big is it? How so it doesn't. It it's, it's not perceptibly moving at the moment. Uh, okay. Rather, the um, so there there is rather just a red spot. It's like okay. um, it's more like a prophetic kind of comet. Like you see the the stars or star comet suddenly appearing in the sky, and it just it's very ominous to see, but it's not actually moving anywhere at the moment. Okay, so it could be coming directly at us, but we don't know that yet. It could be, but. Mm, you can make an intelligence check if you like to see if you can determine how likely um, and how close it might be. Probably not. Uh, Ten. Okay. Um, yeah, hard, hard to say uh, anything with great certainty, <coughs> but you suspect that even if it were coming for you, this comet is not arriving anytime soon. It, it is far away. Okay, and the booming voice. Um, which religion... Do would I think that is associated with? Would I know? You, for that, you can make a religion check. Mm -hmm. So as you spend a moment to uh, to take in the words about um, the mother coming to relieve you <coughs> your mortal struggle. Um, so just straight intelligence, yeah? Uh, religion. Oh, no, sorry, religion. Yeah. Uh, 26. Wow. Um, that can only be Tiamat, the Dragon Queen. Oh my god. Okay. So we've got <laughs> got the Raven Queen, Tiamat, <laughs> some sea god that oh, originally cool. was here, and we're Yana. This is my vengeance for all the gods you dumped on me. <laughs> <laughs> You've done it well. <laughs> no. But yes, that, that is an accurate uh, summary of the situation that you face. Any comet-related like Tiamat business that I know of? Typically, the comet. Um, well, no, rather be with that role. You specifically know a comet of uh, a comet of exactly this description was seen fifty years ago above the destroyed homeland of Dragonborn when they last summoned her into existence. And these lizardy things, uh, not exactly Dragonborn, but um, they look related. They look related. They look like. Well, I mean, you haven't actually seen them yet, so I guess it's it's. That's hard true. To, They're a long way from me. Yeah. Um, you've you've heard shapes described to you. That's all. Okay, I was hoping that if you answered some of my questions, I'd know who to shoot at. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know. That is the the great conundrum oh. in my game. So, what would you like to do? Shoot at the magistrate's daughter. You know you want to. I know. I still want to. <laughs> um, so, does my bow count as a magical weapon? Um, unless it is magical, it does not. I mean, the bow is, but would it? Oh, if the bow is magical, then yes. The the arrows okay. are automatically counted as magical fired from it. And sorry, like it with exactly. No, it does count. Um, the the arrows fired do count. Come at me, bow. Um, so the last question I have, sorry everyone, for holding this up. Um, the last question I have is what what is the barkeep doing? At the sound, so she hasn't really had time to react, right? Like this happened at the start of this combat, so it's been about six yeah. seconds. But um, I will say she has probably dropped a mug and she is turned around or turning around towards the source of the sound, like not towards the door, like literally just facing or turning around to face the wall in the direction of that sound. Okay. I am going to just move okay. towards the magistrate's house. <laughs> okay, that is fine. With a double dash. 
Okay. So, um, dash and then bonus action dash. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because you have that, yeah. Yep, I so you can that... move 90 feet, I think, or even more. Actually, I suppose, yeah. yeah and then... If you want to use your action as well. And good. action as well. Yeah. Uh, I guess I could... How how long would that get me? That would be 90 feet, so... Um, you can you can also count out the squares if you prefer, or guesstimate it. As long as you're close enough, it's okay by me. Okay, cool. So that will take me to about here. Okay. Um, and that's action. That's action. A bonus action. And yeah. Uh, okay. Movement. So, okay. following that, um, you you've moved. You've rushed into action towards the magistrate's house, and um, we go back to the other side. And join um, Tamir and Key. Now, uh, Key, the one next to you, is going to come yeah. rushing at you now, like its tongue lolling it, out. Uh, unable it was to... not prone. Right, so it's going to come up. Good reminder, thank yeah. you. It's going to come up and come rushing at yeah. you, like pulling itself up on the um, on on the halberd that it carries, and then it just stands. You can see it's in pain. It grunts from that pain and sees you, and there's just a, a hatred in its beady eyes, and it just comes swinging at you, um, not once but twice. It will um, swing twice here. Public, please. And that is that. Okay. So one and two. So it rolls a 15 and a 10 to hit. Does a um, 15 hit you? I'm guessing not. Key just kind of yeah. leans back smugly. So, like, the first one you manage to just lean out of the way. It brings it, like, the halberd up and tries to slam it down on you. And you literally all you have to do is just take one step to the side. And you just watch the halberd sink into the ground and just rips it free with a grunt of anger. Um, it tries to say something, barks something possibly over its shoulder at its allies, and it just fails and grunts once again in pain as its jaw is just not working properly. <clears throat> okay, then uh, the other one, um, this one is going to move up, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's going to do the same thing, try to hit you twice, um, having noticed the call for help. So does an 18 hit you? Uh, an 18 know. hits. Okay, so 18. Once per turn, uh, it can deal an extra 10 points of damage. Well, 3d6 rather, so. Um, Ouch. So it will deal uh, 19 points of slashing damage to you. Okay. So yeah, the, the second one comes rushing in. The first blow you still manage to avoid, but the other one actually kind of partially blocks off your uh, ability to dodge, and then you just get cut across the uh, across the shoulder and chest. All right, um, then we come to Calcor. What would you like to do? Um, he seems incredibly annoyed, <laughs> but... Um, he makes a big show of it, but actually he's mildly concerned. Like, Seifert hasn't glowed in a long time. Mm. And so he, like, pushes himself up with a bit of a wheeze. And then it's like, Krutiga! And then grabs him out of the air, like, misses a little bit as he's, like, fumbling for it. <laughs> Reaches around and then uh, basically, because uh, he's moving uh, Seifert around, basically summon the... He sort of just grabs it out of the air from where it was hovering. And then, uh, like, lurches up out of the chair, sort of knocking the chair over as right. he goes on. Ruth's eyes, what the hell was that? Uh, and then he wanders over to, like, <laughs> stomps over towards the door um, and looks out um, and basically takes in the scene that we've already described. Mm -hmm. uh, he then immediately sees the comet in the sky, looks up at it and goes, What the, the truth? Kosugo, what the hell is that? <laughs> and meanwhile, looks out of the corner of his eyes over to uh, Jester and goes, get here. <laughs> uh, and, and he's basically pulling his trousers up slightly okay. at the same time. 
<laughs> and basically adjusting himself and then basically sort of like trying to get himself <laughs> he okay. hasn't he's all slightly flustered uh then as the like as soon as that didn't actually do any action so to speak he then is like suddenly remembers and he's like oh and then basically taps his um sort of like taps his uh um chain mail and basically does a small gesture and goes print and then taps it and his whole uh, armor and all of his possessions frost over basically mm. yeah okay so okay. you frost over we'll say your warhorse goes on your turn um just for convenience okay. sake i think the movement speed is 80 feet or 120 feet um so uh you oh, can yeah, use... just can make it there no problems he's just yeah. not gonna get up this turn so, <laughs> let's say you you managed to make it to about here and jester is yeah. here uh waiting for you to uh to rise up uh essentially <clears throat> okay um, i actually get him to like briefly kneel down <laughs> like, okay. I need to get on quicker. okay jester can use some of its movement to to get onto onto its knees just to let you uh clamber on top okay so okay, that's your yeah. your full turn yeah that's me that's okay me. excellent so Kalkor uh lurches into action no other way to put it and um let's see so we've got a few more and then tarwan you're up uh so here first of all biora is um looking at the wall and she says um She'll turn to the to the tavern, and she addresses the guests primarily. But you hear her say, "Quickly, you must go. Leave, leave by the east passage. Just go, walk away. You can do nothing here." And that's that's all she says, um, instructing the rest of the the people in there to to go, who all begin to move. Uh, they'll they'll just go at the top of the turn essentially. Um, so that is Bayora. Uh, she does nothing else beyond that that you can necessarily de determine. She kind of moves back here. There's a window behind the bar through which she can look out across the village uh, center. So that is where she is. And then um, we will have two more attacks from the uh, from the creatures here. So first of all, this one moves up. Two, three, four, five and um sorry two more no uh one one so this one moves up and it will take a shot at uh tamir um with a short bow that they have in their hands um so one of the arrows uh hits tamir in the side but he doesn't actually notice it and um just like in the midst of his next swing he just breaks it off and doesn't seem to notice at all that there's like a piece still stuck in him um then we come sorry i had misjudged tawan you are next okay um yes first off um is there anything remotely important or significant about this village as far as we know <laughs> um I'll say you can make a history check to kind of dig into the research that you did <coughs> and read before you came here uh, to okay. see if there's anything that springs to mind. But off the top of your head, nothing seems to be important. Okay, well, I'll have to look at my modifier. So, uh, dub, 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 history, history. Okay, that was 17. 17. <clears throat> besides it's like you did read a little bit a tiny footnote about the association with Valkua but besides that you are distinctly certain that there was actually nothing special about this village at all or it was not supposed to be in any case okay so um, a rules question because mm -hmm. um, I haven't got it up in front of me if you message someone it takes an action, doesn't it? It would typically, yes. Um, um, but and how about replying? Is that is that a well, bonus action reaction? Um, let me see. Cause, uh, let me check the item that you're using. It's no action to reply. Uh, 
it says you can use a bonus action to send a telepathic message. So, oh, okay. um, and it can reply yeah, using can reply a bonus action as well. Yeah, actually, I do have that somewhere. Um, <clears throat> okay, in which case, um, there we go. Yes. And uh, depending on what, if if an answer comes back and what it is. Right. Well, uh, she has to do it on her turn because she doesn't have a bonus action right now. So. Um, oh, I see. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, I, swear, I guess it's fair enough. Um, and the range would allow me to go. How far? I believe it says on a cre uh, creature you're focused on, and it can you reply using a bonus action. So I'm going to say that as long as you were in range, like to see the creature that you're focused on when you did it, the reply can always come. Like, uh, even if you move completely out of range, uh, out of visual range, okay. like, they can still answer. Fine. In which case, um, I will exit the, the, the bar okay. and head towards um, the area that is on fire, etc. Um, another question, because obviously uh, we all heard... Um, the result of, of Simon's uh, very impressive role <laughs> <laughs> about what's going on. Um, when when Taiwan gets outside, she'll obviously see the comet as well. Mm -hmm. um, she's she's like you know, WTF? What does this mean? Yeah. Um, is it possible to have another? I, I, I'm aware I've done a role of. Yeah, no, definitely go ahead and make a religion check. Uh, I just with... point out that I did ask Krusiger what the hell that was, looking up at the comet. So yes. he would probably... If he, I don't know if he's on initiative at the same as me or not. But Right, yeah. that's a good point. Um, well, we'll say that Krusiger will go at the end of the round now, and then next round he'll go with you. Um, just for, for ease. And my role was nine, so I guess I, <laughs> it's a comet. It might um, be religious. <laughs> It, it is a comet, but I will say that you can overhear what Krusiger has to say as it is being said. Um, so okay. that will come up in a moment. Um, there's just a couple Fair of enough. I, mean, I, I assume I don't have enough move, well, I mean, I have movement to, to um, uh, you know, do anything when I get there. Um, that depends on where you want to get and what you want to do. Well, I want to head within... Um, a certain range, but no closer to what's going on. Okay. Um, well, I don't. I don't know what your movement is, so probably best make your movement first, as far as you can go, and then see um, what you can see from there, uh, reasonably. Okay. And my movement. Um, sorry, I'm not familiar with the. No, um, that's okay. Roll sheet. So uh, it should be at the top next to the... initiative. Like it's oh okay yeah. so it's a basic thirty then okay yeah my movement yeah so you can move thirty feet um, theoretically I would say I don't know if this would be something that Calcor is up for but you could theoretically share the warhorse if uh, if you could support Talwan um, that might be faster okay um, I don't know if Calcor is okay with that though that that that, that means sitting quite close to to yes. Calcor doesn't it. He's quite sweaty and disheveled, isn't he? <laughs> he is. And probably a bit smelly. He's not. No, he's 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 not. Um, he's not. He is sweaty. <laughs> that, that's he's not disheveled at all, and he's uh, keeps himself. Yeah, he actually takes he takes pride in his appearance. He's just not very good at it. <laughs> all, all right, but but ah. but if there's any chance that the sweat is going to rub off on her, there's no chance we're getting. Okay, so so not the war horse. <laughs> <laughs> There is no room on that. Okay. <laughs> uh, so it's a moot point anyway, then. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you can right, move right. roughly, let's say, you know, you can. So this is about as far as you can get with your normal movement, and then you can still dash from here to get to about here. So that would be this square here, if you see my indicator. So you can get about there, but then you're not yet in visual, like, you don't have a very clear visual of everything that's going on. So you would only see part of the way. So that's up to you. If you want to dash um, 60 feet, or if you want to just move at a slower pace. Um, 
to do something else with your, with your action. Um, Tawa? Sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't think there's anything I can do with my action, so I might as well just use my my action to go... Okay. Yeah, to death. All right, so yeah. um, you make it to here. And um, let me check if you have... Do you have a bonus action dash as well? <laughs> Not as far as I know. Right, no. Okay, good. So, um, oh, right, and your bonus action messaged anyway. So uh, you will get a reply from Biora, yeah. and uh, you are on your way to, to the disturbance in the village. Okay. Um, following Tarwan, uh, we come to two more creatures here. Before I forget, I get an extra 10 foot first turn of combat. So I'll just ah. give myself a minute. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. All right, so here, um, this one is going to... One, two, three, four, five, six. Move up beside you, um, Key. And he's going to attack you twice as well, or attempt to. Um, although... Yeah, he's going to attack you. Um, for a... Wait, eight and a twenty-three to hit. Uh, twenty-three hits. Okay. So first attack again. So that will be another nineteen points of slashing damage as uh, they attempt to carve into you and put you in the ground. <clears throat> All right. So that is its turn, and then this creature at the fire turns around and observes the chaos that is broken out. <clears throat> and it says again, Do not fear. Your suffering will end soon. And again, that voice just booms through the village. Um, it will move forward and... Where is it? Here we go. It will move forward and it will make its attacks against Tamir. So it strides. And as it walks, uh, Ki and Ara, you can see that it leaves on the ground just fiery imprints that briefly seem to flare with an unnatural flame. <clears throat> then it unleashes onto um, Tamir. First attack. Oh, it's not with advantage. Now oh, it's auto-rolling advantage. Okay. Um, well, it unleashes on to me a big time, um, and you watch as both like both of its hands have these horrible claws on them, and as it claws into Tamir, um, it rakes across his body, and you actually see that his just the very skin on him and the the cloth catches fire, and he is now currently ignited as well. So he will take. Uh, 12 and 6 is 18 plus uh, that's 26 and 32 okay surprisingly as he gets hit and is on fire he is uh, surprisingly unbothered by that fact in fact um, he seems to be shrugging off these blows better than many people you've seen over time the fire is like scorching away his um, rather fine clothes, but it like the skin underneath is burning, but it's burning very slowly. And in the meantime, he seems to be either in a fo state of focused battle rage or some other heightened state of awareness that is preventing him from being very, very affected by this. Okay, Krusiger will speak and indeed uh, reiterates uh, some of the information that. Um, Halim was able to determine on his own. Um, regarding the comment, the um, the Dragon Mother and um, what happened 50 years ago, including, uh, and this is additional information, just because Krusik is such a, you know, um, knowledge base, telling you a very detailed story of, uh, or very quickly, but um, more detailed story of how they summoned the Dragon Queen and she actually reigned over Adara, which is what that place was called, for several months before she was driven out again and banished from the world. 
once more during the God's Fall by a group of heroes that no one has ever heard from since. <clears throat> In any case, um, that is the information that Krusiker is able to provide you. And um, he does make the remark that this comet is still far away and that the one that summon, like that actually uh, promises the imminent summoning of Tiamat uh, should appear larger and more imposing. <clears throat> So that is Krusiger. <laughs> so that is Krusiger. Uh, we come back to Key, and uh, the villagers in the in the tavern all begin moving, and rush out to try to escape uh, through the east side of town. So I'll say they they get to about here. <clears throat> okay, um, Key, it is your turn. Um, you are facing three. Yes. So. I'm going to, first of all, the one that looks like its jaws hanging off, mm -hmm. I'm going to try and help it <laughs> completely remove. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. That is a 23. 23. Yeah, that will yeah. hit. <laughs> and then uh, nine points of damage. Wow. Okay. So nine, um, go ahead and make your next attack as well, if you are intending to hit it again. Is it still alive? It is still alive, yes. For then, the moment. Then yes, please. Uh, another 23. Wow. Okay, roll damage again. Uh, 11. Okay, so if you'll permit me, I'll describe this as such. Oh, you do. You go to punch up but you see the the jaw kind of hanging open and the tongue lolling out and with the one shadowy tendril you just reach up and you grab the tongue and you rip it down and the whole head comes down crashing towards the other punch and the whole impact just crunches the skull so badly just groans and then just drops at your feet completely inanimate um <coughs> you still have your bonus action in movement so what else would you like to do yes well I think how annoyed um, he is <laughs> and how sensible he's feeling. Mm. <laughs> um, it's up to you. All are the the buildings. Is the house next to me? Um, the house next to you is... its uh, Most of the houses are not that tall. So the, uh, the house next to you is mm, maybe just large enough to house a, lo uh, a tall human. Uh, but that's about it. Uh, the warehouse is a bit larger. Um, but it doesn't look like it has two stories. It's just a little higher. Yeah. Uh, so maybe three or four meters. That's okay. But um, I reckon if I stand on the roof of the house next to me... I could probably reach 15 feet. I th Yeah, yeah. I think so. Okay. You, you'd probably want to move like a little further up on the house still. Yeah. Um, but you definitely could, yeah. So in that case, I will... I will use um, Step of the Wind to, to okay. disengage. Okay, very nice. Um, and the way he's going to do this, because, you know, jump mm -hmm. distance is doubled... So he's just going to just kind of somersault over their heads, mm -hmm. to land on the side of the building, and just kind of run up the rest Very and cool. onto the roof. Very cool. So you easily leap beyond them and uh, get up on the on the top of the building, putting yourself at a safe distance um, so that they should not be able to easily hit you, even with the halberds, which do have a, f uh, a mm. reach of 10 feet, but you can outrange that with your 15 feet. Okay, perfect. And I, do I have any movement left? You definitely do, because this only takes you one, two, three, let's say four, four squares. So you still have, that's 20 feet of your, uh, I think you said 35. So you can move yes. three more squares. Uh, is it a, a sloping roof? It is, yes. It, it's a, it's just a normal thatched uh, roof that's like sloping towards the, the middle. So I'd kind of just like to just get over the crest. 
Okay, easily enough. So I'm slightly. Yeah. You know, yeah. So you're really kind of out of reach um, until yeah. you are ready again. Yeah, that's easy enough. Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. So that is Key's turn. Ara, what would you like to do? Um, I would like to take two. So the big bad, he's had a few shots gone at him already, hasn't he? Uh, he's had one shot from you that. Oh, is uh, that it? Plinked off oh, of him. Oh, yeah. I. Oh, I see. I thought. I thought that like the other, the other, the other guys. Um, I thought Key was attacking the big bad as well. No, he was attacking the small ones that are. Uh... It's currently just oh. three of them in a row over here um, that you can see. Well, that's annoying. Okay, well, I guess the little one that's next to um, Tam Tam Tamir. Yeah, Tamir. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can do I have? Can I reach him, or does he have cover? Uh, no. Um, you would suspect that from here. No, you have a straight line of fire, so you can shoot cool. at him. I mean, yeah. So, just quickly, didn't you say he kind of cleaved it in half with his 46? No, he made a double over, like the mole in the stomach, uh, but it is still standing. Just barely, okay. but it is still standing. Sorry. Yeah, so no, no, good, I'm going to take... Yeah. I'm going to take a... Um, I'm going to take a crossbow attack mm -hmm. at it. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll take my first one. Because I get a bonus action one as well, don't I? Uh, okay. Only no, if you I have don't. the crossbow mastery. No, feed. I don't have the. I don't. I don't. Uh, oh, that's shit. Um, and then I can't do crossbow followed by a dagger, can I? No, because you need to attack with a light weapon. I'm pretty sure for the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Tube. Ah, that's annoying. Fuck. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's fine. Fine. Then in that case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide. Okay. Bonus action hide. Uh, roll and then stealth again. I'm going... Yeah. Oh, that's not very good. <laughs> that's a nine. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So you step behind the. It's it's rather like this. You step behind the tree, and behind it, you are well hidden. The problem is that any time you step outside of it, there's only one place you could appear, and there's a lot of open yeah. space. So it's very easy to fine. see you once you once you step out in the open. Ah, fuck it. Okay, fine. Well, that didn't work, so I'm still going to go for that guy. Okay. Um, and I'm going to hit him with my crossbow. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> I was hoping to go for someone else, but it's not working. Okay, fine. Sorry, that's cocked. Okay, so... Um, that is... I'm a plus eight. That is nuts. Um, <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> um, Twenty... Uh, Shit. Um, 20 shit. 22. I, I, that's not going to hit. <laughs> but a 22 will hit. Yeah. 22. 22. Okay. Yeah. 22. So you swing out from behind the tree. You fire again. And you have an al At least you count to me in this case as an ally, uh, I think. Yeah. So you do get sneak yeah, attack yeah, yeah. against yeah, him Yeah, anyway. exactly. Which is why I went decided to go for that one. Okay. Let's yeah. Go. All right. So my sneak attack is... Ooh. Six. Three and three, so that's a twelve. Twelve is then, the and then my D ten is a oh, it's not very nice. Seven. Seven. Okay. Yeah. Uh, nonetheless, as you uh, fire off the bolt, it hits straight in the neck and pierces through, and you actually hear it clatter onto the ground beyond. Um, but the creature mm -hmm. just kind of looks in your direction for a moment, startled, surprised, and then just collapses to the ground in a pile. So Gosh. that is a secondary kill. And well done. Does does it does it um did it seem like it was less responsive like the big bad was? Um no, no. This they they seem to be okay. taking full the full brunt of your attacks. Fine. Nice. Good to know. Yeah. Cool. Okay, um, so would you like to move? That's it. Um where can I move somewhere where I can hide? You could potentially get behind the warehouse if you like. Like this direction, I think, would be yeah, possible. Let, yeah. Oh, no. Um, I'm going to go for the next tree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> go ahead and move your, <laughs> go ahead and move your this token. Tree there. there you go. I think that's, that's okay. okay. I think that's one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Perfect. That tree. All right. So <laughs> following Ara is going to be uh, Tamir. And Halim, you are right after Tamir. 
Um, so let's get to Tamir, who, seeing the creature in front of him drop, just immediately goes into the next swing where he, like, breaks off the arrow that is stuck in his side. And he's going to take his two attacks against the large, fiery herald that is standing beside him. And, um... Ah, oh, screw it. He's going to recklessly attack. So he's going to attack with advantage. Why not? Why not? <laughs> so that'll hit. Um, so that Ooh. is uh, 18, 30 points of damage on this crit. Plus 20 is going to be 50 points of damage. Fuck. Uh, but his <clears throat> weapon is not magical. So oh, as, he impacts, as he impacts twice, you guys hear the slight like crunches and the grunts from Tamir as he's trying to impact this, but the uh, the herald only laughs in his face as it takes uh, as it takes still a sizable hit, but not nearly as much as it could have from the uh, from the blows. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um then uh, that is Tamir. Tamir is going to just move over to the side just to give a better access for anyone else coming in. Um, then we come to Hallam. What would you like to do? Okay, so the first thing is um, finishing my movement mm -hmm. to the window. Okay. Um, is the window open as I... Uh, it right. is not open, but it is a clear window, so you can look inside. Okay. What do I see? So let me um, move this into a direction that uh, makes sense for you. So inside of the dining room in which you previously spent time with the magistrate and his wife, you see no one and nothing. Um, the clays have been played out, uh, cleared out. The, uh, the wine glasses are gone. The wine is back on the shelves where it should be, but there is no one there whatsoever and the fire is also burning very low it has not been tended to since you last saw it as far as you can tell uh what time did you say it was um it, i didn't say a specific time but it is uh a little after sunset um it's not that uh, that late yet it's probably like eight in the evening roughly um but it is still early in the year so the sun does not. Oh, uh, it still sets quite early. <sighs> okay. Um, uh, still lacking information. Um, so I will use a bonus action movement as well. Okay. Um, Did you and... fully use your previous movement? Because you might. Yeah, thirty. Okay. Yeah, just to get there. Okay. Um, so the next one I can get to uh, the window here. here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can definitely get there. Can I see anything through there? Yes, you look down upon a sleeping young woman. Great. That's, that's unexpected. <laughs> she is. Uh, she's lying in bed with a uh, a book that she had been reading, like just fallen over her, um, and she is. Uh, yeah, she didn't fall. Insight like... check. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um... <laughs> you can. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, so for my action, I'm gonna use movement as well, um, okay. and just head towards the fight, I guess. Okay, I will say at this point the stream is narrow enough that you think you could potentially like long jump it. Ugh. Yeah, I forgot about the stream. <laughs> uh, Thirty actually. Puts me in the middle of the stream. Yeah, you you essentially you take the 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 start of the leap now, and then you just get a little extra movement on your next turn uh, okay. to make the leap. All right, cool. All right. I'll try. I'll try and do that then. Excellent. So Halim, you you rush up and you get ready to jump across the stream. Um, looking now from where you are, you just see a roaring fire beyond the warehouse, um, which is actually large enough that the flames are kind of peeking over the over the top of the building. Um, okay. It's a surprisingly um, strong fire for what you suspect is quite a small, regular building in this village. Um, I will shout out um, nothing. <laughs> okay. I mean, the word nothing. Okay. Nothing is shouted by Halim. Okay. Um, then, from the uh, east, actually... Um, 
Tawan, you're, you and Kalko are the only ones who notice this, comes rushing from the small building on the east side of town, comes rushing an older, slightly older man, um, who is freshly into his battle gear. He's got a shield strapped to his arm and a sword in his hand. He looks like an attempt at being a knight, but not quite one. And he's just rushing <laughs> towards the, the, the danger and the flyer, having just managed to dress himself. <clears throat> Then we come to... Okay, we come to some bad guys. And Kalko, you are next after this one. So, just FYI. Um, this one is going to move up besides its master. And it's going to attack Tamir twice uh, with its... Uh, it doesn't even need to be there. It can just be there. With its halberd. Uh, it's going to... One, two... Which both fail. So, um, uh, you guys don't see mo most of this fight except for Key, but he's just fending off blows and he's just standing alone before these uh, these creatures trying to kill him, uh, keeping their attention while you arrive or help him as much as he can. <clears throat> um, then Kalkor, your turn. Okay, um... He's so uh, Kalkor wheels round. Uh, once he's on the horse, he's actually pretty uh, stable. He's a very experienced mm -hmm. rider. Yanks back on the reins, uh, wheeling Jester around, and he he sort of wheels it round, puts the shield back into place, and then his sort of like hair whips back as he does so, wobbles slightly on his saddle <laughs> as he sort of he leans forwards and his belly sort of goes over the pommel of his saddle, <laughs> swallowing it up. But as he wheels round, he's got this sort of manic glee in his face. <laughs> just like old times, eh, Crucia? <laughs> he just rushes all the way. <laughs> he like, beats it into a gallop. Uh, meanwhile, Jester will use the dash action. So he goes flying towards the bridge. Um, he doesn't have to say anything to mm -hmm. Jester. He does, does exactly what he needs to. So he goes down and across the bridge. Yeah. But as he's going over, he sees how far away the other um how far this like thing is yeah and uh, essentially sort of like carries on anyway but then he sort of brings the his uh um his sword above me mm -hmm. uh, above himself and sort of brings it down and he goes bring me a weapon <laughs> and then he turns around and looks at it and a blade appears right next to <laughs> 60 feet distance hmm. appears right next to uh the uh uh the the herald right and <laughs> attacks it because he can't get there okay so that would be a spiritual weapon correct it is indeed yeah. yes nice so let me move you uh i think i roughly understood. So i think i get just across the bridge to the other side but yeah, then uh, and then come down and wheel it down towards the sky but then uh, 60 feet like that weapon is easy enough yeah. to bring it within 60 feet of it as a bonus yeah action. i think so i think that definitely works out because you can spawn it like next to it and then exactly. still hit it yeah okay so, um so go ahead and make the attack with your spiritual weapon yeah. um Second, let me just find out where the bloody hell it is. There we go, spiritual weapon. Okay. Ooh, uh, okay, that's a 19 to hit. A 19 uh, does hit. Woo! Yes. Uh, it's just a spiritual weapon. Uh, so, yeah, it's just going to do 1d8 plus 4. <laughs> <laughs> and that is 8 points of damage. Okay, 8 points of damage, uh, of radiant damage, correct? Not the hugest amount, but yeah, no, but it's good. So as the the weapon comes into existence, I assume a perfect copy of of uh, Seifert, um, yes. it just slashes down at the herald, and though it doesn't make a physical impact, it still cuts through and leaves this like glistening what you would call a wound, but in like a a, a celestial fashion, um, leaves that on the herald, and it kind of looks over at you and just snarls. Um, that is your action bonus action and movement, correct? Correct. Yeah, that's plenty. <laughs> okay, so at the end of your turn, <laughs> um, it will, looking at you and frustrated with your attack, um, it will use its legendary action to call nice. down upon you a 40-foot-high cylinder of fire. 
uh, crimson fire centered on you. And um, when you start your turn oh there, you are engulfed in flames. So at the start of your next turn, we'll deal with the effects of this. Brilliant. But I will summon, and it is quite large, I will say. So um, it's roughly, hold on, 20. Yeah, it's like this, roughly. Back into a moonbeam of some kind. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> moonbeam of fire. But you, you get the impression as it's summoned that it's actually for a second you think the comet is falling on top of you, but then it's just fire that rains down on you and engulfs you completely. Or, or scolding up the cheek. Like, <laughs> 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 um, Crucigo will just say, just stay cool. And that's it. Um... <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> she holds my face. Looks up at Crucius. Like, Not helping! Not helping! <laughs> That's it. That's all Crucius can can do. Um, so that is Calcor's turn. Then we come to something that you don't see. Then we come to attacks. So one of the ones that you left behind, um, Key, will go and um, hold on. I need to cross something off here. Bloop. Um. It will attempt to, hmm, will it? Yes, it will attempt to climb up the side of the building. So it's going to use its action to climb, or attempt to anyway. Let's see. You hear scrambling up the side of the building and it just does not work. Um, <laughs> there is no effect. So the other one, uh, no, the other one doesn't go yet. So it's just trying to scramble up the side of the building. And when it fails, it just rushes around the side in instead to potentially cut off any escape. Three, four, six. So you hear footsteps of one of the creatures running around. <clears throat> um, you all have clear vision of this fight at this point, by the way, because of the enormous fire that's roaring nearby, which is unnaturally bright and unnaturally high. <clears throat> then we come to Tawan. Okie dokie. Um, well, um, just out of curiosity, from the distance I'm at, can mm -hmm. I tell how badly wounded that barbarian chap is? Um, I would say it's very hard to tell, especially because he is actively on fire. That's kind of obscuring the, the vision of, of uh, seeing how well he's doing. But probably, probably not, not doing... In fact, I think I was going to say probably not doing too hot, but clearly he is, so... Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> please don't uh, leave. It's good to get the puns in, even as a DM. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, I th she figures she's in range, um, and she will draw a rod out from her mm -hmm. overcoat uh, in one hand, and with the other hand, she's going to cast some white... I mean... Vicious, like looking into the sun type white mm -hmm. beams of energy at the herald okay okay um what's the range on that specifically 120 feet. oh yeah easily so you can do that there. even from where you where you start your turn well uh, it's, it's, it's pretty close but um yeah it's, it's yes it's, it's so, yeah. 110 ish um cool so is yes, that a saving throw fun. from from the herald uh, I need to roll a spell attack, and having ah. never done that before, I've been looking it up. Um, <laughs> you should see a I... DC next to. Yeah, if you're not I sure, you more... can always. Yeah, are you using roll to? Are you using the D and D uh, thing? I'm not using D and D beyond. I'm using roll twenty. Yeah. Okay. It it will be so... in the center of your character sheet. There's an attacks and spells section. So if the spell is on your character sheet, it will appear there. Um, but otherwise, it's just a d20 plus your spell attack. Let's assume you have set it out correctly, because I can't honestly see a section did, for yeah. attacks What's... on this sheet at all. So, let me just navigate you to But, it. um, nevertheless, um, I've got, I mean, I've looked up spell attacks. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an Eldritch Blast. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, it's easy enough, like, we're on the sheet that you're on now at the top right it says spell attack bonus you just roll a d20 um with that spell attack bonus and i believe because of your level um uh, okay. you have uh at fifth level you have two beams so you can make two spell uh, attacks two beams i do yeah, yeah. so so that i don't need to add anything on um 
to that spell attack bonus um, no. in terms of proficiency, because that's included. That, that's all in there. I, yeah. have a, I have a bonus from this rod that I'm holding, so I'll add that to it. Yes, and then, that goes on top and that's um, my thing. to both the attack roll and the damage roll. And uh, uh, to your damage roll. Let me, let me, I'm not sure about the damage. Um, yeah, because it's a general. No, it, it, it says attack rolls or saving throw DCs in my attacks, but it's not oh, that really? kind of spell. So oh. I don't think it is. What a terrible thing. Well, <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I'm looking no. at. Uh, you know, no, you're right. You're right. Dark. Yeah. Sure is right. So yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Okie dokie. So. <laughs> so that's twenty nine to hit. <laughs> that will hit. Yes. <laughs> Just slightly. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, so I've got two of these things, um, and because of an ability, I've got I've got a fairly sizable bonus on it. Oh, on the damage. Yes. So... This is going to be uh, horrendous. Uh, of course, I, 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 this is, it depends on my rolling well, which of course I don't. But um, uh, So 22 points of damage is the end result of all that. Wow, 22 points of damage on him. So this is for one of the rolls, right? Oh, no, no, no. So I've done both. So one hits with, like, nine points of damage, and the other one hits with 13. Right. So. Uh, right, um, so. but I had one attack roll from you, the twenty nine. Right? You, do you have oh, to I hit see. Do I have to roll? I think you do because you can three. direct them at different targets. Okay. Well, I, um, let's see. Uh, oh, right. Well, I mean, okay. Do, I mean, it's unlikely I'll... you miss, but well, no, for... let's let's roll again <laughs> for the safe. attack, and then and then I can roll yeah. randomly if I need to decide which one. Um, and that is thirty one to hit. <laughs> also hit. So twenty two points of damage. Beautiful. Uh, and that is force damage, if I'm right. Which mm. I don't believe it has any resistance to. So, as two, as you described them, brilliant bolts of white, correct? Um, yes. Shoot forth from, uh, I believe, actually, with the rod of the pack keeper, you can channel through it. So, essentially, like, like almost like a firework, you can just shoot at the creature and woof, woof, both impact and... Um, where it was previously staring angrily at the engulfing flames that it had summoned upon Kalkor, it now turns its attention to you. Is <clears throat> there any problem? <laughs> <laughs> um, having said that, I haven't actually moved. You have not, so, no. Um, I could use my movement to uh, duck behind the cover of that building from sight anyway. Um, let's just see where I'd have to be. Yeah, you, the nearest is the, the cart, and then there's the, um, the gibbet here. Yeah. Or there's an enormous yeah. tree that's, like, right here by the, by the water side. Um. Okay, well, I think on the basis that the cart is behind the lead of the building, <laughs> I may be able to just, just park True. myself there so that he doesn't actually know where I've, where I've gone unless he moves. Okay, yeah, definitely. So, so that's what I'll do. I'll duck behind the cart, knowing that I can come out the same distance the following round if I need to, and strike again. Sounds good. Um, so yeah, go ahead, move your token to the place you want to stand. And then from Tarwan, we move on to one dead person and um, and one alive. So this one here, um, Ara, you did not successfully hide last turn. So it's going to one, two, three, four five six move up here and it's going to take two short bow attacks against you one and two so all right that's a 10 and a nine to hit you which i don't think will hit you um you i can't hear you man um, i think you muted on uh discord Do you have a physical mute, maybe? But regardless, I mean, at least they don't hit, so take your time to, to work them out. Your turn's not up yet. Um, no, nothing. No. That's odd. Um, in any case, I'll, I'll keep going, and just hopefully you, you can figure it out. Um, let us know if Never you can help. Um, the Herald, then. So after failing can you to hear me, Kevin? Yeah, I can hear everyone else, uh, clearly. Oh, okay. Can you guys hear Mads and uh, only I can't? 
No, and she's not muted okay. on Discord either. Yeah. So. Hello. Hello. Oh, so, hey, man. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was odd. Uh, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> so he misses you twice, just shooting arrows into the into the stream, um, and then. And the like, <laughs> so we come to the no. herald. <laughs> um, Let's hear. <laughs> we come to the herald, and it is going to take an attack of opportunity from Tamir, as it suddenly rises into the air. Um, Tamir does hit it for. Um, let me see for twenty points of damage. It rises into the air, roughly thirty feet, and then moves over here. <clears throat> so it's currently flying 30 feet uh, above the ground able to just peer over the over the the top of the um, of the warehouse building and seeing not who it's looking for just yet tall one you did manage to, to successfully hide from it at least a little bit um, <laughs> it's um, it will instead hmm it will instead use its fiery lance attack. So it shoots. Um, so for that, it would actually have had to move this way because it could see along the way. But it shoots in a five uh, foot wide line for 60 feet. Uh, Ara, you're going to have to make a strength saving throw as it shoots a fiery gust at you, trying to uh, put you down. Um, the DC I is... Me? What have I done? <laughs> it's it's currently just trying to take out whoever it can. Um, but the DC is 16 on your saving throw. Uh, oh, so I, I do a saving throw? Yeah, strength saving throw, specifically. Oh, you know what? Um, that was a 15. Let me just see what... I think it's a zero, though. <laughs> so... Okay. Uh, yeah, it is a zero! It's a 15! Okay, this is possibly going to hurt very badly. Oh my god! <laughs> you are pushed 15 feet away and you take 26... Wow, I rolled really low. 26 points of fire damage. Um, that was a low really roll? Yeah, it's one, two, three, two... Like three ones, oh. a whole bunch of twos. That's a low roll I'm on 26. <laughs> oh my days. On the plus side, you know, fire damage, but you're pushed into the stream by the looks of it. <laughs> yes, so... but you will have to make a dexterity saving throw to see if you take any falling damage. Um, oh my god! Being blasted into and the rocks. Yeah, I don't think that's too bad. If you bad. drown, um, that, that's a sixteen. Okay, so you get blasted away. You don't manage oh, to no, resist. No, sorry. That's, that's nineteen. Nineteen. Right. So you get blasted away. You manage to resist, or you don't manage to resist the the physical force of it, and it overwhelms you and it burns you. But you take that movement and being as agile and, and nimble as you are you actually leap backwards into the stream and fall under the rest of the beam so you manage to avoid it um and you just kind of crouch on a couple of rocks which you've held on to incidentally i get like a bubbly <laughs> even from well actually it's more that you're just submerged onto about your waist uh in icy cold mountain water but uh you do manage to be slightly hidden from view just by this positioning so being pushed into into the stream has had a slight benefit um that is a good question i forgot to answer you um that was the answer sorry uh tall one yes that's fine okay um so that is the herald's turn at the top of the round um I'm going to need everyone who is on their feet, um, on the ground, to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, Ara, you make Might yours with disadvantage because you're in the river no. or in the in the stream. No. So that does uh, Calco. You can make it for the horse um, instead of for yourself. Uh, dexterity saving throw and key. Um, you can make yours with advantage. I'll say because the house. So essentially, what happens is an earthquake begins to rumble. And it's powerful enough that it threatens to throw you off your feet. Ten. Am I technically in midair as I jump across the stream right now? Uh, that is a, <laughs> that's a fair point. Um, but the rumbles the afterwards idea. will leave you. So we'll make a dexterity saving throw for you for landing properly. Um, because of the... Uh... <laughs> Chester is amazing. 20. Nice. Table. <laughs> as one stable horse. 
Yeah, yeah. Twenty five for key. Twenty five yeah, for key. For key. Easily. Key, you stand probably on one leg, just like chilling. Like yeah. this is not a problem. Raising the other one crane position to kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, twenty four. 24, very nice. So you you will land without a problem. Um, and Ara, what was yours? Five. Ten, Ten and five. Okay. So oh. um, for, for Tawan, for you, it actually just forces you to the ground. So it will mean that you have to spend half your movement to get up on your feet. Um, Ara, mm -hmm. you uh, are submerged in the water completely <laughs> and suddenly... And um, I need you to make a constitution saving throw against the icy cold that washes over you. Oh, my days. Oh, that's not so bad. Okay. So that's a 22. Okay. So you manage to actually resist the effect and the, the shock of the water um, enough that next turn you'll only have to spend half your movement to, to, to like climb out of the water. Um, but, yeah, it's it's not a pleasant sensation uh, by any account. Um, key. We come to you. Playing in the water. Get out. <laughs> well, you don't see that because fire. Because <laughs> fire. <laughs> um. It's a, in fire. Uh, so key. We come to you. You are watching. Well, kind of noticing the one trying to kind of climb up and then walk around. Mm -hmm. Key's going to walk kind of just, you know, that. I've, well, yeah. Yeah, be there. enough. And just, um, you know, wailing shadow claws over the edge. Mm. Okay, easily enough, so go ahead and make your attacks. Uh, that is a 15. Uh, a 15 does hit. Barely, but it does hit. So you kind of have a moment where you have to redirect the strike in mid-air, but you do manage to connect. It's for 9 points of damage. Nice. Um, second attack. Ooh, natural twenty. Ooh. Nice. So go ahead and roll there. Uh, roll double. That is time. Timing. Wow, that's a good one as well. Five, eleven, fourteen, twenty-eight. Wow. Uh, okay. So, um. What I'll say is, the first strike is not so much doing damage, actually. I'm going to combine them two. But the first strike is you reaching over the edge and searching. You grab a hold of him and actually pull him up in the air. And then with the other strike, you just crunch him in the face. And you just, like, you hear the crunching of the bone and the scales. And then a tooth just comes loose as you drop him to the ground again. Because obviously you can't just hold him. But um, you manage yeah. to pull him into range and then just really wail on him. Uh, and you just hear coughing and cursing in a language you don't know. <laughs> and you know, now my my shadow claws know where he is. Uh, yeah. Flurry of blows. Okay, go for it. <laughs> uh, Key is just cleaning eight. up here. <laughs> <laughs> A twenty-one. Twenty-one hits. Go ahead and roll Four, damage. Three. Uh, Ten points. Yeah, you hear another satisfying crunch as you connect once more with the and coughing. A fifteen. Fifteen also hits. Or uh, twelve points of damage. So just from behind the building, you just hear, "Oh fuck!" and he just falls down, uh, and you hear another body hit the ground, which is uh, not an uncommon occurrence for you apparently. Um, <laughs> so that's your. Uh, you moved five feet, I think. So you still have the yes. rest of your thirty. Um, um. So I'm gonna kind of kind of run the back so into five. And just kind of linger back here ish. Okay. One second, I'll reveal so you can see. I mean, you're on the roof, you don't actually on see the, the roof, inside, yeah. but no. otherwise, you can't see your token. There you go. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, still on the roof, you get a better view. You see Tamir, who's facing one of the remaining uh, scaly creatures. Um, and then you see the Herald just floating in the, in the air. Um, next up is Ara. Okay, so I'm going to stand up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to poke my head above the um, side of the uh, uh, thing. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to bank, and I'm going to try and hide. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's easily enough done, so go ahead and roll your stealth roll. Um, you're kind of... It's more clinging to the side, because despite the, the, the depth, um, 
the the stream does flow quite quickly here. Uh, just oh, I see. So I can't is. like, I can't. So I can't like, you know, just stand there. And... Yeah, it's, you're not standing in the kiddie pool. It's well, more like you're holding on okay. and you're kind of hidden um, by by the side of the bank. But you won't do that. Fine, but I can pop up. I can pop up and. Yeah, um, you, it just takes a little bit of climbing and movement. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Okie dokie. So that is a nineteen. Yeah, you Start. feel pretty. Hidden. Um. Yep, and then I'm <laughs> going to. Um, I'm going to use my crossbow on okay. the big bad. I know it's not. Um, I know it's not. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, magical, <laughs> but I'm still going to go for it. Sure, go for it. Yeah. Uh, make your attack with uh, your you. um, sneak attack. Okay. What do you? Oh, you mean advantage with sneak attack, isn't it? Um. Yeah, you're attacking from stealth. That's correct, actually. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, so that's a 19 plus mm -hmm. 8. Nice. Uh, 27. Um, <laughs> fine. And then I'm going to use one of my superiority die okay. to um, do a trip attack on him Okay. as well. Um, so it's that's a strength saving throw of 14. And then I, I get to add a d8 to it. You do get so to add a d8 to it. Um, however... Yeah. He is currently yeah. magically floating, so there's not actually any tripping yeah. that he can do. There's no, you know... Oh, I can't knock him prone? No, because he would just remain oh. floating, so there, there wouldn't actually be a, a, a change in... You can still add uh. the damage die, but I just want to let you know, and you can change your mind oh. if you wish. No, um, I changed my mind then. Yeah. I, the whole point of it was to like try and whack him down that, that can crowd. that can work if somebody's uh, flying with wings but this one seems to be yeah, magically yeah. floating so there's nothing that would Fine. get it down by hitting it in a certain way oh that's really shit oh i don't think i want to i i don't think i want to attack him then okay. no it's fine i i don't think i want to attack him then not at all okay i would want to attack the other dude um yeah go for the it the little dude yeah yeah do you want to trip him should i roll again yeah um uh, Nah, I'm not going to trip. I'll, okay. I'll save it. All right, yeah. so you just kind of clamber up the side using probably like 75% of your movement, and then you just kind of peek mm -hmm. up. like It's almost like you're in a trench, um, and you just pop yeah. up, take a shot, and then duck back down. Yeah. So I'll use a D10 plus my 3D6. So my D10 is a 6, and then 6 plus 3, I think it is. Yeah, 6 plus 3 is 9. And then my 3d6 is one, mm. two. What did you roll to hit? Three. Uh. 27. Oh, right. Or do right. you want me to? No, no, it's fine. Yeah, do you no, want me to reroll? No, no, it's good. It's good. I just didn't remember okay. if you had. Yeah. So that's a 10, 11 for my, um, okay. my sneak. 11 for the sneak. So the total is how much? It's 11 for the sneak. And then it was. Uh, Six nine for the right, the so twenty. Total. Okay, so you pop yeah. up, you you nab him immediately. He looks over to you because, of course, that gives away your position. Um, yeah. But uh, you do get him really good, and you can see there's like a, a a bit of blood that begins pouring out of the wound where the the bolt is, and he just kind of rips it out um, and holds the place. But um, he does know where you are now. <clears throat> okay, um, that's the end of your turn. It's going to be Tamir and then uh, Hanum. So get ready. Uh, Tamir is just going to take his two attacks against the remaining guy over here, since he doesn't really have anything to do up in the sky. And he is going to um, recklessly attack again. Uh, yeah, that'll hit. Um, 25 and 23. Yeah, so once again, Key, you just watch Tamir literally still on fire. And by the way, he does take damage from that. Because um, I forgot last turn. So you, you see him, like, burning, uh, but with, with this quiet determination, or possibly rage. Like, you've heard of this kind of rage state. You just see him swing the maul again. And this one also doubles over at his feet and begins coughing up. He's still alive, but barely. <clears throat> um, and then we come to Hanum. What would you like to do? <laughs> Um, I, I'm having a serious faff moment behind all of this. Um, so this warehouse, 
that's on fire. Is that the one with the red box around it? Uh, the one with the red box is on fire, but it's a house. It's not a warehouse. The only warehouse is the one that's right in front of you. Okay. So the house is on fire as well? Only the house is on fire. Oh, only the house is on fire. Yeah. The warehouse is just my landmark that I was using as, uh, uh, as reference. Okay. Uh, what kind of house is it? It seemed to be a regular residential house uh, for a for a family. When you when you walked into town, you had a brief glimpse at it. Um, there were some people walking in. It seemed to be a small family uh, that lived there. So it, like nice drapes. <laughs> not <laughs> anymore. It is now a horrible, horrible inferno. But you said um, something about the fire not being natural. So it's the fire does not appear natural. Fire. Like the just by the sheer amount of material. And um, you you would never have expected the fire to be as large or as intense as it is. It's like something is keeping this inferno going magically. <clears throat> okay. Um, if I were to get to uh, the window, would I be able to see directly in? I don't have a huge amount of movement. Into the into the house, you mean? That. Um, yeah. So if I was like ten foot away from the window, would be able, would uh, it be you probably wouldn't be able to see anything. the 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 flames are so intense at this point that um, you can't even see the walls through the fire. You just hear the crackling and the cracking of wood as it crashes in on itself uh, in multiple places. But there's not really a window to look inside of anymore. Okay, and the the flying herald. Can I see the Flying Herald from where I am? Um, interestingly, you're probably... I mean, he was just looking over the side, so I would say you saw him as you jumped, and then he disappeared behind the warehouse just by, by sheer virtue of, like, you having to look up so so um, from so close up to the, the warehouse. So currently you don't see him, but you know exactly where he is. Okay. How far forwards um on the right hand side of the warehouse would I have to go before I see him? I would say probably to the other side of the tree, of that large tree to the north of you. Okay, I'll just move there then. So that's probably just my movement, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. So okay. Yeah. Um You can just <laughs> from... you, you just see like a head with a large turban like um <laughs> thing on top. That's that's peeking out over it. Okay, and for my last trick of this nothing session, um, I am going to put, putting out all the facts that we have so far about um, strange events that don't seem to actually happen. Mm -hmm. I want to consider that the Herald and all the damage it's doing is not real. Okay. So I want to fight if if I am under some kind of okay, okay, right. Um, so you you faced illusions it. before. You're trying to see through. Through yep. an illusion, effectively. Yep. Um, that means you're making an insight check on the Herald, effectively. Okay. So go ahead and make an insight check on the Herald. <laughs> uh, ten. Uh, seems pretty real. Pretty, pretty real. Um, all the fire seems really real. All the shouting and fighting seem pretty real. Nothing stands out to you as being an illusion. At this point, where the bloody hell did this thing come from? All right, cool. Um, is that an action, or can I? No, I will say that you can you can have done that uh, freely. Okay, I'll just shoot it then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like just like other option. Of us. <laughs> okay, I'll just shoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I would have liked to have shot right from the start because I get massive bonuses if I do, but because I I chose not to. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of yeah. Um, uh, how much? No, did I have enough movement? I wonder if I had enough movement just to duck down, um, bonus action hide, and then shoot. Is that? Um, I, I would I say. I mean, you could have hidden before you moved into range to even see it, so you can definitely, like, we'll just change the turn order a bit, and you would have hidden first, and then moved into range to see, and then to shoot. Okay. So go ahead and make your that. stealth roll first. Right. Um, that's a, a no, probably. Uh, stealth. Uh, 14. 14. As you move out uh, to, to view it first and to determine if it's an illusion, 
you take a moment to stare, and in that moment, mm. it actually looks over at you and stares back. And so Not it sees real. you. So no advantage on the attack, but you do have your normal attack. You're not the real. <laughs> and finally, um, my first shot is 15. 15. Um, 15 does not uh, penetrate its armor. So as you shoot, um, probably what happens is actually the, the look that you get back from it, plus the unusual angle that you're shooting at, happens to throw you off just enough that your arrow, so perfectly placed usually, just happens to uh, hit the side of the uh, the building. Like, it scrapes across, and it's just wide enough. Or it just causes it to go wide enough that it doesn't hit. I think you have a second attack, though. I okay. actually hit. It just uh, made me think it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Delusions are also deviancy. Just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I rolled exactly the same. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! So at least I win. <laughs> so once again, um, an arrow goes wide, unfortunately not hitting the the creature. Um, perhaps indeed making you believe more that it is an illusion. You're not real. Okay. <laughs> so I think that's the end of your turn, correct? Yes. Okay, so the man who emerged from the building near Utah one is going to um, see you, and he puts the, the sword back at his side, and he comes over to help you to your feet. So he uses his action to pull you to your feet, if you allow him. Uh, do you have any objections? He's not very... Um. Um, nice about it. He just comes over, he grabs you by the shoulder, or he attempts to grab you by the shoulders and like pull you to your feet, if possible. Well, a, a, a very small line appears between her eyebrows. It's the, the only sign she gives. She'll let him, you know, roughly yeah. pick her up. Well, okay. get her, bring her to her feet. But, yeah, she's not entirely happy about it, clearly. Okay. He, um, he is so busy that he actually doesn't notice your displeasure until the end of what he's about to say. Um, but he says, looking at you and then looking over his shoulder, um, did you also see someone go into the tavern? Just now. Uh, if you'd I like, you can make a I? perception roll. Um, oh, okay, why not? As a counter. Average. Let's see. Perception, perception. Twelve. Okay. Um, you did not see whatever this man might have seen. No. What entered the tavern? I think it's a distraction. Stay here. He clearly doesn't seem to know who or what you are. So he's just treating you as, as a guest that's in distress. So I just stay here, hide. And then he go, uses the rest of his movement and action to dash towards the tavern. She'll shake her head as though the man's just covering for wanting a beer. <laughs> um, as he runs, the, the scabbard does come out. Um, or the, the sword comes out, out of the scabbard again. Okay, so that is him. Um, then these are dead. There's only the one left by Tamir. He's going to try to take kill Tamir. In a futile effort, probably. Um, one, two. Oh, the first one does hit. So, Tamir takes a hit there. And then, Kalkor, you must make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Um, okay, that was an 18 plus. <laughs> 18 plus... 18 minus 1. Um, 17. 17, okay. Um, you take half of this damage. Okay. Um, Hang on a minute. <laughs> Is that a saving throw for half uh, damage? Yes. In that case, Master Shield Evasion, cruising her to the rescue. Ah, nice. <laughs> I take zero damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but please roll the same saving throw for your horse. Oh, okay. Come on. Oh, Jester. Um, What's that? Jester, right? 
<laughs> yeah, poor old Jester. Uh, he so got a 16. I don't know what he probably can... Probably has well. decent dex. Um, so you yeah, take... he's got plus two. He's got plus two dexterity. Okay. So it's 18. Okay. Um, so you take no damage. Jester takes half damage. So Jester takes seven points of damage. Of fire damage. Um, of fire damage. Yeah. Okay. But Jester is a hardened warhorse. So Jester does not scare or um, buck or, uh, or do anything out of the ordinary, just gets ready to move okay. at your command. All right. Thanks. Let me just uh, make a note of that. He's still all right. Jester is okay, yes. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. Right, okay. Second. 18 to 12. That's how much left. Right, okay, cool. Um, okay. Yep. Now what? Now it is your turn. Okay, uh, bursting through the fire. Um, this thing's hovering about 30 feet above the yep. ground. What's is... the maximum? I'm on a horse, and I've got a sword, and if I was to stand up in my saddle, do I think that I could get to, say, 25 feet above? Um, the horse is tall. You would... Mm, I would probably... Give you closer to 20 total. I'm just wondering, because basically he's got a thing called telekinetic shove, and he can pull something five feet towards him. Okay. <laughs> um, if it fails, it's saving throw. So he, yeah, he uses it to pull people around, basically, but he's wondering if he can get this thing and grab it down to him and get it within range. R roll a straight d20. Okay. That was a one. <laughs> so, unfortunately, in this instance, Kalko does not think that he could get in range um, okay. with that particular In that move. case, okay, in that case, um, <laughs> that couldn't be new, right? Um, <laughs> in that case, uh, he will... Um, uh, it's that thing 20 feet from where the sort... Where it, I guess if it went... Yeah, up, it moved... Then, up and then moved 20 feet but it moved past the sword so the sword would have to move about 35 ish feet right now to get in range so 20 feet at a time um, ah. so, okay in that case he will do something really stupid um because <laughs> he's in the thing it's like he's like free, he's like burst out of the flames and he goes Fight me! Okay. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and goes racing towards it. Okay. Now he's, <laughs> he slows down the horse as he does it. Right? Okay. So, yeah. So, um, uh, basically, this is, let me just make sure on this one. Um, oh, this, oh dear, this is not a good idea. Um, okay, it's compelled duel. Um, right. So, wisdom 15 saving throw. Okay, let's see here. Uh, range area 30 feet so i need to get within sort of 30 feet so he's going to ride close enough to get within 30 feet okay. yeah i mean you'd probably have ride... to get like pretty much under it or, yeah, or exactly. almost yeah so he's probably gonna what i might do is get jester to ride like straight past okay so, um so basically he's gonna try to get within 30 feet of it and then slow down and stay uh, okay, we'll say it. we'll say like at least you get to here, and then you can still move a little after because it's not your full movement, regardless. Yeah. Like this is fifty feet, and then you know the rest of your movement on Jester. Okay, cool. So then the next thing, and I'm just playing a little bit of game stuff here. So then the next thing is like I've still got my action. Mm -hmm. So he's going to use his action to dodge, and he's going to tell Jester to use his action to dodge. Okay. Um. One second. So, um, for a moment, you feel the, the power that you invoke, Yana's power, overwhelm this creature. And then it just looks down at you and says, no. And it just resists anyway, using one of its legendary resistances to shrug off the effect. Coward! Coward! Just, it looks at you with such strange disdain. Um, as if it, it considers you entirely beneath its notice. <clears throat> okay. Um, so that is action, bonus action, movement. You still had more movement uh, on, on Jester. 
Um, so I guess if it didn't work, mm-hmm. then he would probably go carrying on about 60 feet. It, I was, yeah, so I guess if it if it didn't work, then yeah. he, he, will, he will just move his full movement, um, okay. but he's not uh, going to use his... His action is to dodge, and so is mine. Okay. Well, you you, you know the full movement of Jester better than I do, um, so go ahead and move yourself and Jester yeah. in the direction okay, that, that. that you go. Yeah, you move. I will do. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so, Calcor, um, then we come to <clears throat> a flash of light from the tavern, which anyone, so Ara, Halim, uh, Tawan, all of you who have vision of the tavern at this moment, who are not actively looking in the other direction, or like Key are just very far away. Key, you maybe see it out of the corner of your eye. See, from the window, it's just a brief, pure white light, which shines forth. Um, you're not sure what it is or why, but uh, there's just been a pure white light. I knew it. Um, that is that. Then we come to the last guy that is alive, which is this fella here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he readies an attack for the next time he sees you, Ara. <clears throat> so um, he's going to wait for you to pop up, and then he's going to shoot his own bow at you. So it's the one by... The one by by Tamiya uh, already attacked him. Uh, ah, yeah. sorry. Um, let me see. So then we come to Tawan. It is your turn. Okie dokie. Um, let's just do a quick range check. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, pants. Ooh, I'm on the very cusp of 120 feet away from this guy. Yep. I think I am. If I, if I measure it from the edge of my token to the edge of his token, mm. it's just about it's just about 120. Yeah. But tell me what you think. Um. Well, there is the the height difference as well. So you uh-huh. might want to take at least a five foot step towards him just to get really within range. Yeah. Um, no. Fair enough. So this this structure south of me, what is it? So that's where they do hanging and public. You know, it's a very old structure. It doesn't look like it's been used uh, in a long time, but that's just a public execution station left over from days okay. long past. Um, so is it is it just a basic framework with a platform, or does it have sides to it? Uh, no, it's just a basic framework with a platform. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to use a bonus action to send a message to um, Halim. Okay. Um, now the question is: Do you want me to type that to you both, or should I just spit it out? Um, if if you would prefer not to tell everyone immediately, then uh, go ahead and type it to us both. Uh, or just yeah, type it to one and copy paste to the other. Um, you want me to go running to the tavern? <laughs> I have been running everywhere. <laughs> Why not? Uh, <laughs> we'll do it <anything> else. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> oh, man. It's good exercise, you know? So you don't end up like Calcor. <laughs> I do the running. Okay. okay. So that's the message. Running is for idiots. <laughs> <laughs> it's the message that Halim gets. Uh, excellent. So that's a bonus action for you, and then Halim, you can reply with a bonus action on your turn. <clears throat> All right. Um, and I will move, you know, five feet. Oh, what was the answer to the question about the sides of this platform? Uh, no, no notable sides. Like, if you wanted to use it for cover, you'd have to like crouch underneath it more than anything. It's not very. Okay. High. So assuming I move. Assuming I move five foot towards him and I have 25 feet left, mm-hmm. where do I estimate is my best chance of decent cover? Um, um, from that position? Let's see. Yeah, you are slightly exposed here. I would probably say on the other side of the platform. So you could, if you move here to the square right beside you, then you could duck yeah. under afterwards and just stand on this side and kind of, you know, just by virtue of the, um, the angle, uh, it would hide you from its, its direct gaze 
essentially. I mean, okay, fine. I, I, I don't want to singe my nice uh, furs. So, um, so I will move those five, uh, five feet towards him. Okay. And um, being unoriginal, but it being reliable, I'm going to use another Eldritch Blast. All right. Yeah. Because it's a cantrip. <laughs> Um, right, okay, so we've done that already. So, first one. Um, 8 plus 22. Wow, yeah, that hits. And the second one, um, just so. Uh... Yeah. And the second one, uh, 23. Also hits, wow, those are incredible rolls. Especially <laughs> then, they weren't very good rolls. I just have a massive bonus. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, you had 31 last round, so that's... Uh... Yeah, let's see. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, well, that's... that's um, uh, 29 wow. in total. Okay, so 29 points of damage, and then uh, you duck under the, um, the gibbet yeah. and rush to the other side, essentially, to hide yeah, here. Exactly. Uh, okay, Fabulous. so let me see one thing real quick. Okay. Um, so there is a frustrated scream of rage that emanates from the Herald as this happens and it gets hit sees you ducking away and just kind of roars in anger and then turns around and seeing the the grouping that has happened behind him um, just points one finger at Yuki and summons another column of flame down upon you uh, for its legendary action this round. So, Key, at the start of your turn, we'll, we'll have to make a dexterity saving throw. Um, but then, for its action, it is going to uh, first see if it gets this back. Okay. Then it is going to come flying down straight at you, Kalkor. Um hovering beside the war horse and it's going to take its two attacks against you um, so the first one is a 21 to hit it's a disadvantage if I'm dodging oh right you're right so it's a 13 to hit and uh, the second one is an 8 so both times you manage to duck in the saddle and like with just a dancing beneath you just making sure that you don't get a hit um showcasing you know despite all of the negative sides that you've displayed you have a great bond with this creature and you do manage to be very effective together um the first blow you dodge the second one you probably catch on cruciger um who you just hear an indignant hey uh, <laughs> That's, that's it. He's just indignant. Um, and then frustration from the uh, uh, from the Herald. <clears throat> All right. Uh, that is the end of its turn. Now, we go to the top of the round. However, it is the end of the time that we have for this session. So we will pick it back up next time oh again. Day. Sorry, hey, guys. Hey, roll it hey. this, is, <laughs> this is why I knew, like, I knew there was going to be a confrontation. I just didn't know if it was going to fit. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you guys for playing. Oh my goodness! Uh, wow. Okay. Thank you. That was brilliant. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still Very have cool. no idea what's going on. <laughs> that <laughs> is what I hope to uncover next time. But uh, um, I will say, as as a teaser, at the top of the round, yeah. the ground shakes again, not severely enough to debilitate anyone, but um, there is another column of red color not flame color that strikes down on the tavern and um the side of the building kind of breaks open and nothing happens otherwise but the side of the building breaks open and this red uh, beam just shines down on the tavern for a good five or six seconds before disappearing so it does oh, wow. seem that there is something occurring at the tavern that is demanding attention i knew red it beam? was a distraction I'm still ignoring it. <laughs> Where's the red beam coming from? Coming? Uh, from the sky, uh, but it has oh, the wow. same hue as uh, as the comet. I am just glad I'm playing Kalkor, who doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Seen something to smite. 
<laughs> anyway, well played, you guys. Yeah. Thank you for putting up with my crunchy combat. And uh, hopefully yeah, next time great. we can uh, make it a part three and uh, and find some answers. Because I think you are oh, definitely oh. owed a few answers. In any case... Can I reply <laughs> to... Um, um, I'll say, yeah, like for, for the sake of the story, it's more fun, I'm just so gonna forget what we go were ahead and, and, and <laughs> yeah, give yeah, yeah. Tarwan a reply, um, and then we have that for next time. In any case, uh, thank you all for playing. Thank everyone who watched now or will watch later. Uh, remember to follow, subscribe, do all those cool things to us, but also go over to twitch.tv forward slash keep and follow them, because that's these awesome people, and they play every Tuesday at 8 p.m. BST, uh, and you have to watch them, because they're awesome so oh. in any case uh thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time with more of our part three now truth bringers <laughs> bye everyone and also, sunday. The also, <laughs> also sunday yes on sunday we play um we play <laughs> tales of a day thank you <laughs> not the greatest hype man but anyway thank you all for watching playing everything and we'll see you sunday and then tuesday next week for more awesome D. bye stream Bye. Here we go, everybody. Touch on